<laughs> Broadcasting live from beautiful Midtown Manhattan, where on a clear night you can almost see horses searching for the ten Osama bin Laden lookalikes, but so far only finding those two guys from ZZ Top. It's the Ron and Fez Show, and I'm your announcer, Grego. And now let's introduce your host. The guys who aren't too thrilled to hear about Harry Potter making $93.5 million its first weekend. Especially after they lost 10 grand gambling on a Quidditch game. Here they are, Ross Bettington, Fez Watley, Radio's Golden Snitches. Buddies, buddies. Buddies, it's the Ron and Fez show. It is uh, nighttime in Manhattan, Fuzzy. It sure is. That would account for the darkness. And we will stay with you till 11 o'clock. I'm Ron. The uh, attractive lady sitting across from me is my partner, Fez. Too nice. Thank you. Hiya. And uh, we'll be here with you all night. We're giving out a bunch of DVDs for... Uh, we'll see if you can guess, Fez. Who's in charge here? Who's in charge here? DVDs for the uh, Planet of the Apes film. The Marky Mark Planet of the Apes. Right. I don't know what the extras are. I don't know what we're getting. I think there's T-shirt, action figure, trading cards. Oh, I meant a part of the DVDs. Oh. I don't know uh, what kind of behind the uh, scene things we've got. But they keep calling it the evolution right. in DVD. Sure. And you get to, like, sit in Tim Burton's chair and call different camera angles, I think. No. I From think your house? Are you sitting there and you're playing that? That's what I thought I heard in the TV commercial. Jeez. I'm a big fan. I wish I could have done that before the film came out. I think we'd have made a little more money. You should be able to do that with all Tim Burton films. Why not? Let's get that Edward Scissors hands back out and start working on it. Start taking the scissors to it. Can you believe how hot it is? It's almost Thanksgiving. Yeah. And, and I want the air on in here. It's really hot in here, Hawk. I don't know if you can do something about that. Can you uh, get some kind of uh, African handmaids to fan us? Do you have anything like All right, Hawk. Sees there you himself. go, Hawk. That works. He sees himself as an African uh, handmaid. Well, he's half right. So that'll start, be fun. Start flapping those wings, Hawk. Yeah. Get a breeze going in here. It's sweltering. Also, we're giving out this MP3 uh, song uh, thing for a parody uh, contest that will be running for a while. If you've got parody songs. or You know, we're always looking for a parody guy, Fuzzy. We've never really found one. Right, yeah. Fuzzy and I used to work with a guy who, would, who could write really quick things. We're looking for somebody. To kind of join the show in that manner. So we want to know who's that guy. It's the I Want My MP3 Song Parody Contest. Right. You can email us MP3 versions of your parody songs to Ron and Fez, R-O-N-A-N-D-F-E-Z, at WNEW.com. Or you can even mail them to us at Ron and Fez Show, WNEW, 888-7th Avenue, 10th Floor, New York, New York, 10106. That's a lot. That is a lot. That yeah. information's on WNEW.com. Or, yeah, or just write to uh, Ron and Fez at WNEW.com. It's that simple. We'll send you all this yeah. stuff. Uh, wild show in here Friday, Fez. I have no idea what happened. I'm still remembering details along the weekend and even into today. Like going, oh, yeah, that happened. That's right. Freddy Frank got smacked in the jaw. Stuff like that. That was fun. That part yeah. was really fun. Friday fight let a woman hit him twice in the jaw. Popped him right in the jaw, right in the same spot. You can see a picture of it, although they say it's Lewis Rockman in the New York Post. Right. It looks a lot like Lisa Croft in Friday Fright. Hey, Al uh, Dukes, fabulous Al Dukes. Did we get the pictures up on WNEW.com? Thanks for kicking me. Yes, we did. I haven't Sorry. seen them yet. What do they look like? They hot? Yeah, they're good ones. I'm going to check this There's out. There's probably a lot of Al in there. So we had the, you know, we tried to have a slumber party. And the girls started drinking. We had all these games planned. And instead of uh, being a slumber party, they just started to rock each other's little worlds in front of us. Sure. There was no playing the truth or dare because they had done everything you could possibly dare them to do. Yeah. By the first hour of the show, they were completely lit and into each other. 
All right, Al, I'm not getting it on mine, but I'm on AOL. Is that why? Yes. What is the problem? Al, they you just don't even up? know that. You're just using it as an excuse. No, they went up uh, oh, uh, probably about five hours ago. And they haven't made it to the uh, the AOL part yet? I guess not. Yeah, I they're up here. That. Wow, that AOL's on a delay. Do yes. they know about the bombings? They blow. Uh, yeah, just, all right, here's, uh, the birthday girl from the other night, Fuzzy. She's, uh, just giving us a call. It's Hot Liz. Hey, Hot Liz. Hi, I Hot Liz. Hi, guys. I just wanted to thank you for the chaos the other night. It was chaos. Chaos was. and cake. You know, Never we... in my life did I think I'd walk into a room and get molested by sweet Melissa. <laughs> they, they were out of their minds. And, and you know, were... sweet Melissa had, like, two glasses of wine, and then the uh, next day was doing... Oh, my God, I barely remember anything. I'm really cool. sorry. She was cute, though. I yeah, she's fun. adorable. As soon as we could pick her up off the floor, she kept uh, falling off her chair. Yeah, she was falling down like <laughs> quarter after uh, seven, and she started drinking at seven. She fell into me at one point, and I was trying to hold her up and get a microphone on her at the same time and ended up ramming her head into the mic oh, at no, the same I, time. I saw that because it was... Uh, mic on teeth. Yeah. And these are big mics here, and you smacked her right in her front teeth with it. <laughs> yeah, I was doing all right until I uh, shotgunned that beer, and then it all kind of went downhill after that. Yeah, when you got here, all hell had already broken loose. Yeah. <laughs> but I just wanted to thank you guys for the cake and everything. Oh, I was thank just, you. We had a lot of fun with you guys coming It out. was wonderful, and I wanted to thank all the girls for being there, because I appreciated it. Now, we'll do another slumber party, but we'll have to really uh, slow down on the uh, drinking this time. <laughs> that might be a good idea. I mean, idea. we'll have to, you know, actually time them. Yeah. And say, you know, you only get one wine cooler an hour. <laughs> okay. I'm late for class, guys, but I just want to call and thank you and tell you that I love you. Right. And What class back. is tonight? Yeah, Shakespearean track. You don't even want to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm, uh, you know, going to class, too, that whole drinking and driving thing that... Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling them I know it all, and I'm sorry. All right, thanks, all right. Liz. I love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, hot Liz. Hey, uh, Dennis. Dennis, you're on running Fez. Hi, Dennis. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, card cardholder number 500. Hoo -hoo -hoo -ha. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That was, guys, that was probably one of the greatest shows I heard. And when I heard Rory Hampton's get belted, that was, oh, my God. Well, that, it that, wasn't Rory. It was Friday Fright. Friday Fright. I'm sorry. Yeah. Rory yeah. Hampton's would have dropped that broad. <laughs> <laughs> Rory always goes into fighting man mode. It sounded like, like Ali Frazier again. I mean, just the thuds. I was like, wow. I couldn't believe the sound that was coming out of the microphones and everything. Yeah, it was wild. And, you know, we were just uh, literally had no uh, control here. All right, Bye. thanks. All right, See you later. Bye. But what are you going to do, Fuzzy? They're friends right. of ours. Or sure. They're good to the show. And and if an intern won't defend himself. He had every chance. Yeah. I, he w She would have killed him in a fight. Sure. It wouldn't even have been close. You get hit once, you ought to know another one's coming. But, you know, sometimes, you know, I got a real long uh, email from a from a young lady who listens to the show who was just furious about Friday night. And I'm going to write her back because, you know, when someone takes two, three pages to write to you. Oh, gosh. All the uh, problems she had. But, you know, you write back. But uh, she was not happy. And, I'm, and all I'm saying is we had no control. Right, yeah. These are our friends. That's the most control we had. They're our pals. Hey, uh, Chris. Chris, you're on uh, Ron Fez. Hi, Chris. Hey, boys. How you doing? Hey, buddy. To cap off the weekend, uh, I don't know if you guys caught it, but on Survivor Series last night, front row in, in uh, Greensboro, Ron and Fez signed. First one I ever saw. You know, uh, I never, uh, Fez and I were actually watching that last night. We don't know who the guy who did it, and it actually it looked like he had Ron and Fez and then a big ass card holder number. Right. But right. I couldn't read that. Couldn't make the up guy, the number. The guy, the guy looked like George the Animal Steel a little bit. Well, that, but, uh, there was that a, was great, man. There was a guy next to him that looked like his buddy <laughs> that had to be seven feet tall plus and about four hundred pounds. That, that was like Hillbilly Jim, I thought. Yeah. And just a giant of a man sitting next to the guy at the Ron and Fez poster. Know what I did though? I didn't. I didn't tape the original broadcast, but when the uh, replay came on, I taped it. I queue. I have it queued up. I don't know if you guys have it, but I'll uh, send it to you if you want. Yeah, I mean, we already saw it, but thank you very much. I don't know who the guy was, but that was uh, kind of surprising to have in the middle of your uh, pay per view in Greensboro, uh, in North Carolina. No, no less, right? That's yeah, I guess that's a big hot spot for us, Fuzzy. <laughs> we don't even know about it. We're doing great in Greensboro. Cause, uh, you know, sometimes Westwood takes us and throws us on places around the country on yeah. AMs at 2 o'clock in the morning. We don't even know where it is. 
All right, boys, talk about the uh, card if you can, will you? All right. See ya. See ya. We love you, Greensboro. Well, I'm sure that was somebody <laughs> from New York on vacation. Oh. I don't, I'm fairly sure we're not on in Greensboro. But you never know with this stuff. And why, where and why they put us on Fez, I don't know. Oh. And they're bizarre times and bizarre places. Yeah, and everything, every time slot is different at every station, so there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. All right, Pantera said send it uh, over so they can put it on the website. That's a good idea. Thanks, Pantera. Thanks. Now you're thinking. Now you finally use that noggin of yours, Pantera. Well, you got to chill out that chick of yours. <laughs> it's Pantera's girlfriend, that punch. Friday fright, right in the jaw twice. Lisa Croft. And, you know, bad enough. He's already, he trying to shotgun some beers, spill beer all over him. He's wearing his mother's nightgown. He's an and idiot. Then, and then kid. getting punched out by a woman. It couldn't have been more embarrassing. Where's Friday? Bring him in here, please. I'll have to ask him about that, Fuzzy. And I begged her not to hit that kid. I begged right. her. Friday fright. Hi, Friday. How's the jaw today? <laughs> it's still a little sore. My left cheek is still sore. Yeah. Really? Still? Yes. Now, yes. Uh, here's the thing. She punched you once when she was giving you a lap dance. That's correct. And that was uncalled for. She asked you about that, right? She said, can I give you a punch in the jaw? Yes, she did. And, and you said, nodded yes. Sure, because you didn't think she would hit hard. I didn't think it would be a closed fist. And she hit you <laughs> probably as hard as she could. Then later in the night... After drinking, she went over and tagged you again in this jaw. Looked like she hit you the exact same spot. That's what it felt like. And that's what a boxer will do. Yeah. And the people were writing in, was she wearing gloves? No. No, closed fist. You know, no glove. And, and she, she may be up next against Lewis. We're not sure. After his uh, second shot, he falls backwards and puts his hands up in that old style John L. Sullivan thing. The bare fist. The bare fist where you got one uh, fist, uh, you know, it's kind of underhand under your shoulder and under your like chin, and the yeah. other one way out there. Anyone who's seen the Notre Dame Leprechaun, right, knows what we mean. Looked like a fight in Dublin. Where did you learn to box like that? 1840s? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> what did you do to make her want to hit you like that? Why she hit you so bad, Friday Fright? I have no idea. I was just, at the second time, I just wasn't awake, I guess. Yeah. And she walked over, and I was staring at her, and she just punched me in the face. Always be ready around these women. Always now be I ready. Be. Would you like to have her back on Friday Fright? Not to punch me in the face again. Are you oh. afraid of her now? Would you dodge her if you saw her coming? Would you leave? I would be more ready. Oh. oh. He's ready to throw it down. Which means you would hit a woman? Well, I didn't last time. Yeah, that's true. Would you next time? Yeah, there's only so many punches you can take, Fezzy. Like, we always said, everybody... I would think that, but this is Friday Fright. Don't hit a woman, but if some woman who looks like Lara Croft uh, keeps hitting you on the exact same spot on the jaw, Ow. sooner or later, you got to fling one back. I think uh, next time I'll just be, be more prepared. I don't know if I would hit her back, though. What are you going to do? Wear Pride? a helmet? If, if I have to. All right. That was just a crazy night. I'm sorry about that. There was no control at all here. Yeah. And one no time, gatekeeping. One time, uh, we're doing live spots, and there was literally a pile of women on my feet, uh, kissing lit everything on the floor, and they were rolling over me. Just rolling around in a big sexy pile. And then here was the worst thing that happened. So, I mean, there's only so much of this that you could take before... You suddenly become like a Japanese businessman in the middle of the whole thing, right? And I have these girls, and, you know, to them, we're nothing. All they want is each other. And they're rolling around, and they're touching, and they're groping, and they're pulling. And, and I'm right in the middle of the whole thing, and I feel a, a, a tap on my shoulder. I turn around. It's Tasteless Ginny uh, oh. introducing me to her daughter for, that I met like a year ago. Oh, jeez. You remember my daughter? She's eight, and I'm like, oh, my God. I felt, oh, I felt just suddenly like there was a film of porn over my face. <laughs> Not exactly the evening to be having family night. I kind of felt like the father, an officer, and a gentleman who was walking around in his boxer shorts and throwing up. <laughs> Had to get the bar towel. Oh, last night was nuts. You know, I mean, it's all, that's all fun and games, but you don't want to be around kids Why that's happening. It's, it suddenly reminds you how awful you actually are. Fortunately, we have Friday Fight to defend us. That's what I'm here for. 
I, hold on. This is uh, Mike. He says he's the guy who was uh, wrestling last night. Hey, uh, Mike. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, buddies. Mike. Hey, man. That was you last night? That was me, buddy. What were you doing all the way in Greensboro? I'm a wrestling freak. Yeah, you follow him everywhere? Yeah. Yeah, good seats. I don't know. I don't even know how I got those bastards. How, who was the guy next to you? That's my friend, the big dog. He's how, a giant. How big is he? He's six eight. He's about, I don't know if he wants me to say this, about 500. Wow. Wow. You see, you guys should be our pals. You uh -oh. should be hanging with us, and we should always have somebody about six eight five hundred 500 on the door at all times here. <laughs> In case our interns are getting beat up. Did, uh, did you guys fly down for that? You drove down and back already. No, we uh, flew down. All right, well, I want to give you something for actually doing it. That was too cool, all right? Oh, thanks, buddy. Uh, buddy. Thanks. All right, hold on for Al. Right. I'll give you something. Give him, um, give him one of those DVDs, and I'm sure we got tickets and stuff. What else we got here tonight? You hand him something. I know those yeah. DVDs are very cool. I don't have any of the uh, prizes, the big-ass prizes in front of me tonight. Uh, we also have, uh, let's see, some movie passes. Yeah, great. The usual. Anyway, get a you know nice DVD. That's something. I hope you got a DVD player. It's a Ron and Fez show. Ron and Fez dot com. Uh, here's Matt. Matt, you're on the uh, Ron and Fez show. How you doing, buddy? Hello, Matt. Hey, guys. How's it going today? I have a spy report for you guys. Spy report. Spy report. Spy report. Well, it's a wrestling theme spy report, actually, from uh, One Wrestling and Four One One Wrestling dot com. Rumors abound that both Jerry Lawler and uh, Fez, your uh, alter ego, I think, the uh, Nature Boy, Ric Flair, are indeed backstage at Raw tonight. So the alliance is dead, but WCW might be coming back tonight. Okay, so Ric Flair backstage. Well, the main the main sticking point on Ric Flair was they had to buy him out from his uh, WCW contract, and they didn't want to do it uh, when they first bought WCW because right. there was so much money owed. But right. now that's getting towards the end of the contract, I guess they just bought it bought him out so they could do it now. Now I hope they call him Ric Flair and not the champion. Oh God! Like the last time he was in the WWF, that was a mess. All right, here's what I believe. Uh, tonight, Mick Foley's saying goodbye. And you saw that coming, right? He wants to take some time away from. The WWF doesn't like this whole commissioner role that they got him in. And Ric Flair will somehow get involved in that. That sounds perfect for him. I don't think uh, you're going to see him as a you know a regular wrestler, but he'll be back in the ring again. Well, the uh, interview that I'm waiting for tonight is for Flair to go woo and Austin to go what over and over and over again. That would be fun. Back and forth, yeah. woo and what. All right, have a good night, guys. All right, thanks, buddy. Thanks for the spy report. All right, we'll keep us updated if anybody's actually watching that tonight. I was looking for the spy report. Plenty of uh, Ric Flair rumors all along ever since the merger. Right. Well, there's, you know, uh, whatever. I mean, we watched that thing last night, Fez. And they need something. They need something back in wrestling. So, uh, there's something missing when you're sitting there for that many hours. And you're not getting, you know, there's just too many swerves. They're just off track right now. They got all the right people. Yeah, they got everyone. Yeah. All right, here's uh, Lisa Croft, Friday, the girl who... Uh, Punched her in the jaw, what, twice? Yes, twice. You must have said something to her. I know. What did you do? She just doesn't go off on people. I really have no idea. To make her that mad. Well, the first time, you asked her to punch you, right? Kind of. But I didn't expect it to be that You thought you'd get a nice slap. Yeah. Up to that point, all the girls were giving you a lap dance, and you said you were in heaven. You were in Staten Island heaven. That's correct. That is correct. And then I got punched in the face. Then the next thing I know, my face is punched. I'm just a kid asking for a cut, man. All I know is uh, I'll be ready next time. All right, well, here's Lisa Croft. Hey, Lisa, how you doing, honey? Hi, Lisa Croft. Hey, guys. Here comes the voice of truth. Yep. I was the one drinking all night, and I still remember what happened. You are insane. <laughs> you you see, are literally insane. You see, now, Ron, I'm going to turn you in. What? Because... We know what happened. I jokingly said, oh, yeah, my idea of a lap dance would be to sit on his lap and punch him in the face. I figured you'd all get, okay, she's not going to do that and leave her alone. But no. All right, go ahead. Do it. I asked him at least None of us ever believed, and, and you were in on that, none of us ever believed that you were going to cold cock him right in the jaw like that. I asked at least three times. I said, do you understand what is about to happen? And everyone's like, yeah, okay, sure, go ahead. I mean, you know what? I understand a lot of things are bits, but I don't work there. What do I got to make a bit? If I say I'm going to hit him, I'm going to hit him. All right. And the first one I saw him agree to. He said, yes, he you can hit me in the face. He did. The second time, 
Ron, this is where I turn you in. That came out of nowhere the second time. The second hey. time I was shocked. Eddie Trunk shocked. was in here. He was beside himself. We all were. I'm a mindless sheep. I'm a minion. You walk over to me and you go, look, he, he's not looking. Go get him again. All right. Oh, oh, did it. Who would say that? Hey, who would say that and who would do it? That oh, doesn't even make sense. Who would do it? It happened on the air. Ronnie's broadcasting. Right. How would he have time to take you aside and hatch this plan? All right. I, I'm the bad guy. All right. You got me. But you know what? I must say in my defense, I really, really did not mean to hit him that hard. In my opinion, you know what it is when you're that drunk? You don't understand your own strength. Yeah, well, I guess so. But I, I, were you, like, always a street fighting gal? Never. You've never been to fights? Nope. Really? Because oh, I was a girl. You uh, have a snap to your punch. Yeah. Have you ever nice hit reach too? Have you, yeah, I know. Before. I've never been in an actual fight. You've snuck people? Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, what about your boyfriend? You have to deck him every once in a while. Oh boy, here we go. Um, maybe I shouldn't talk about this. No, go ahead. Have a drink. Tell us. <laughs> uh, I'm actually not a very violent person. Like, I'm not the kind of person that's going to be Please. like, you're an a-hole and punch somebody. You look like uh, like Sonny Liston when he was the bear. <laughs> nobody could nobody nobody could talk sense into him. <laughs> I really didn't mean to hit him hard. I actually said to myself, I'm going to hit him as light as I possibly can, and that's what I did, in my opinion. Did it feel light to you, Friday? Not at all. Well, my hand didn't hurt, and I've hit people before where my hand was really hurting afterwards, and my hand didn't hurt. My gosh, Friday, what if she really had hit you? I guess that would feel a lot worse. Maybe my jaw would be broken. And you know what? I felt Peyton really Manning. bad. And come on, Friday, did I not apologize you, to you many, many times? You like, a, you, like a shark, have no feelings. Me? Yes. Oh, I have no feelings whatsoever, no. You're right. cold-blooded. You didn't feel Mr. bad. Roboto. No, Mr. I have no Roboto. feelings. But I felt bad about that, so I did apologize. And as he's holding his jaw, he said, no, no, it's okay. As he was, like, kind of, like, wincing away from me. No, and his poor right, little knees right. buckled. Right, now, I was afraid he's going to get blood on his mother's nightgown. <laughs> Were you spitting a little blood up? A little bit. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes, that yes. night he was. He had blood on his teeth. He hit him right in the jaw. Uh, d uh don't mess with me. I did not hit no, him No, you were here. You did. Or, oh, you see, when you're that intoxicated, you don't know what you're doing. Or are you saying later, I went in his mouth with a razor and opened them up? <laughs> Fuzzy, you know, to actually say someone told her to do that. That's the surprising part to me. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, take, go ahead and take the credit for it. You, you knocked him out. You showed the kid what you got. But don't try to pin it on someone else. Right. Oh, I mean an awful. All right, I'll cut my losses here. Okay. All right, thanks, guys. Bye, bye Sorry, Friday. Bye. Thanks. I don't know why I was hitting the jaw, the jaw of a kid trying to make it. All, all I could see is before I blacked out was those big cans bobbing over top of my head. <laughs> is that what happened Friday? You were watching the breasts and not the fist? I don't think that's what happened. I think I was just sitting there and she just punched me in the face. I think it's she was trying to stare down her uh, top. Maybe that's what I was doing. Oh, maybe you were making advances and she hit you for being a wolf. Maybe. That's Friday. He's the wolf. All right. Bizarre, uh, bizarre night, Friday night, Fuzzy. And we got to... It was much too fun. And Friday Fright, you'll have a mad minute later on? Yes. All right. Uh, Evil Fez writes in, Friday Fright is saying, I want to hit you. Uh, I want you to hit me as hard as you can, only to realize later that he was fighting himself. <laughs> He's Ed Norton in the Fight Club. You really are Lisa Croft this whole time. You didn't even know it. I guess not. <laughs> what about the girl who came in, that girl Laura, started crying because not enough of uh, the other girls were inviting her into the, the pony pile that they had going. Right. She came in. She was the one not drinking, wanted to put on a fashion show for us. Yeah. And uh, I had no idea. Yeah. She was feeling left out. During a commercial break, she came back in in tears. And, you know, while girls were making out and rolling around on top of each other and pulling their tops down and everything, she tried to hand us a box of candy, which, you know, She's sweet. Think, She's which was sweet nice kid. and appreciated, but it just didn't fit into the theme of, here, let me stop this action to give you a box of candy. So uh, I told the other girls that, you know, this girl's feeling left out and she's crying, and they got a daisy chain going on the floor. Right. I kid you not, where one's on the bottom, the next is on top, then the next girl comes in on the bottom, the next on top, and 
you know, I know ONA set up stuff like this. This just happened to us. We were totally out of control. Yeah, we wish we could come up with stuff like that. No. They just took it upon themselves to just start jumping each other on the floor. Sweet Melissa and Nurse Mira, unbelievable she is. <laughs> uh, F me boobs is in here. That's right. It's insane. And uh, the new girl. Right, ice, ice cream, cream girl. girl. Yeah, who has an ice cream truck. Gorgeous. And the next thing I know, uh, there's Joe Pooh, uh, the sweet Melissa in the corner over there, like it's the, uh, I don't know what happened. The St. James High School ninth freshman dance. <laughs> it's a total makeout. Joe Pooh's here tonight. Joe Pooh, I guess, trying to take one of the girls out of the action to give the other girl, Laura, a shot. At it. Something, yeah. Try to even up the numbers. I didn't grab anybody out of the pile. Somebody seemed... walked out of the pile and started grabbing me. You got too close to the pile. You can't get too close to the pile. Look what happened to Friday Fright. He got too close to the pile. He got his jaw on hinge for him. Other than that, it was a good night, though. Boy, you still sound really bad. You must have just broken that jaw. Oh, yeah, it's still swollen. Yeah. All right, well, you're going to do your stupid uh, Mad Minute later on tonight because uh, Friday Fright's trying to get on the Sports Guy show. And we get to punch you in the face if it sucks. Really? That's what he said. All right. All right, what's in the uh, news today, Fuzzy? Well, good news, Ronnie, for uh, Rosa Parks. She's, she's still alive, Rosa Parks? <laughs> yeah, she is. I think she's like 88 years old, 90 Eight, years old. I would say she's 88 years young. Oh, okay. That's what you do when someone's getting that old. She's 12 years away from a Smucker's Hello on the Today Show. And uh, she lives in Detroit now. Well, what they've done is, remember the bus? In Montgomery, Alabama. Right, that she wouldn't sit in the back of. Right, she wouldn't give up her seat. She stayed seated. She ended up getting a $10 ticket and starting a bus strike in Montgomery that started the Civil War. It's the Civil War. The Civil Rights <laughs> Movement. No, it started the Civil War. <laughs> and she's still alive. <laughs> well, yeah. now they're putting the bus in the Henry Ford Museum. That same bus, she wouldn't get out of her seat. Hopefully she's out of it by now. What are they putting the next to the Partridge family bus? I think it's a big bus museum. I guess it's an automotive museum. So it's going into the Henry Ford place. Yeah. So this is somewhere in Michigan, I guess, this um, Ford Museum? Right, yeah. Yeah, it's in Detroit. Now, is the bus a Ford? If I'm, a, uh, if I'm going to the Ford Museums, I only want to see Fords. You would think that it would just be Fords, Model Ts all right. the way through. But then, you know, the Mustang, the introduction of the Mustang as you get to the next room. Don't forget the Etzel. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So, All right, so uh, now they're accepting buses in the Ford Museum. I guess it's anything automotive can go in. Now, they, do they let you go back and sit in the back seat in the colored section, as they used to call it down there? I would hope so. That would be nice. I'm sure you'd be able to walk through it. You know, when I was a kid, I used to shoot for the back seat. I would right. go straight to the back. <laughs> That's where the cool kids sat. All right. So, I, you know. So, uh, so when's it getting there? And what kind of... Uh, it's going to open December 1st with the uh, Rosa Parks Foundation. It's the 46th anniversary of her famous bus ride. Wow, has it been that long? <laughs> So it's a very old bus going in there. I believe it's going in the Henry Ford Museum right next to O.J.'s White Bronco. Nice. So I think it's got a really nice spot in the museum there. Well, the bus section, they ought to have Ken Kesey's bus in there. That would be good. I'd love to see that. I'd want to see uh, the bus from Speed. Unless that's already <laughs> destroyed. They must have used a couple. <laughs> that's a good bus to put in. You mentioned the Partridge Family bus. Right. Um... Who else would have a really decent bus that we could shove in this Ford Museum? A nice bus. Oh, what about the sports announcer? He's got that. He goes all over. Uh... Oh, the Madden Cruiser. Yeah, the Madden Cruiser. Let the kids go in the Madden Cruiser. That would be excellent. All right. So what... they just have famous cars in here? Yeah, all kinds of famous vehicles. What about the bus that Randy Rhodes is playing buzzed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, cl it was Ozzy was in it. Right. It was Ozzy's tour bus. And Randy Rhodes... Uh, Real funny. The pilot came down as close to, to like say hi to the guys in the bus, clipped it with his wing, mm -hmm. and off he went. All right, now that's a bus you want to see. Oh, I, I, you know, and then you're going, is this where the wing hit? And, you know, you're taking pictures, and you're getting kids to get up there. You're climbing up on ladders. They snap your pictures and then back down. So uh, you think they got the white Bronco in there? I would say put O.J.'s white Bronco in there. What about the uh, Lizzie Grubman <laughs> SUV? 
<laughs> nice. Yes, that is destined. That's destined for the Henry Ford Museum. I'd put some blocks in the front of it, Fezzy, because that thing has no brakes, from what I understand. <laughs> so put some blocks in front of the tires. Make sure it doesn't roll over someone. You could actually back that one right up to a wall and have kind of like a broken porch exhibit. What about the uh, truck that they pulled Reginald Denny out of in the L.A. Uh, oh, riots? The, Remember that? Right, his rig that they pulled him out of. Uh, make room for that thing. Right. That's history. This is. Uh, you know what? I would actually go to this museum now. <laughs> is it a museum or is it really just a parking lot? It sounds like a nice carport. Anytime you're at the museum, they'll actually sell you the starter out of one of the <laughs> things. <laughs> it's a strange place. So uh, we could throw in Reginald Denny's truck. Yeah. And then what started it all, the, the car they pulled Rodney King out of. Oh, yeah, they yanked him out of a car. I don't know what kind that was, though. Right. And uh, put it in. Hey, uh, Cooch, Cooch, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Cooch. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. How about the bus that uh, flipped over in Sweden with Metallica, where uh, Cliff Burton died? Right, the Cliff Burton accident bus. All right, that goes in. Where he actually fought some guy for the bunk, one of the other guys in the band. Come on, I'm sleeping here. And that was like the death bunk. He didn't even know it. Oh. Everybody else is unscratched, and he's got the bus laying on his head. Yeah. All right, yeah, it, I would you? love to see that Metallica bus. All right, that's it. Right. How about Ted Kennedy's car? Oh, oh that's maybe, excellent. Maybe what they could get is a big aquarium tank and then lower <laughs> that into it. That's the perfect exhibit. And just uh, under, you know, underwater, they have two dummies of a fat guy <laughs> shutting the door on a broad as she's trying to get out the back. Almost like a mermaid show. He keeps slamming the door on her face <laughs> right. and he's trying to get out. It's a Ron and Fez show. RonandFez.com Here's, uh... Lewis, Lewis, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. Hello, Lewis. Uh, I got one for you guys. Yeah. Uh, it's the car that uh, Eddie Murphy got caught with the tranny in. The tranny Hummer car. <laughs> 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 we could have a Hummer section. Yeah. The Hugh Grant car. Hugh Grant, sure. Everybody's been busted in a car one time sure. or another. If you're going to get popped, it's going to be in a car. The Teddy Pendergrass. Again, another <laughs> tranny car. Tranny Hummer car. And, and this thing. is our tranny hummer section. We're very proud of here at the Ford Museum. When you're whacked out on cocktails and coke, and you're getting a humsky from a tranny, don't be going 100 miles an hour. This seems, you know, pull over and get it. Why do you want to hit the gas? If Teddy was smart, he had himself playing on the radio. Oh, he was in Philly. You can't not hear him on the radio there. <laughs> Hey, uh, Ruben, Ruben, you're on Run of Fez. Hi, Ruben. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, yeah um, how about Gloria Stefan's bus? Oh, right. yeah, she right. got in a bus accident. Yeah, and got uh, that, what's left of it, at least? She got a steel pipe in her back, right? Oh, I'd like to fun. see the steel pipe, too. Right. She's, she's Wolverine now. <laughs> they actually took out her skeleton and put <laughs> this metal skeleton in there. She's got that super strong endoskeleton. Jason, Jason, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, hey, what's Jason. going on, guys? Card holder 2423. <laughs> I got to say, what about that helicopter from, I think it was Amazing Stories, the Spielberg movie, with that lopped off Dick Mara on those two kids' head? It was um, Twilight Zone, but this right. is not a helicopter museum. Yeah, that was it's a, a car museum. museum. Yeah, but it's a vehicle museum, and that's got to be an interesting one. Yeah, that but was you know, ridiculous. I know. It was standing like a sore thumb. <laughs> that, you know, it would be cool to have a big dinosaur, but bones, but you're not going <laughs> to just go putting that in there, or a mummy. you got to stick with the Ford Museum. It's a Ford Museum plus helicopter. The two Korean kids got killed. We're going automotive here. All right, see you later, Sorry, Jason. You. Motorcycle at the very outmost. Oh, I don't even think motorcycle. That could be a whole Harley Museum in Daytona. <laughs> hey, uh, Malcolm, you're on Ironic Fez. Hello, Malcolm. All right, hey, what's up, guys? I got the best bus. What about the Open Anthony Foyer bus? Now we're talking. Yes. So many that people arrested. That was a big civil rights bus. Okay, keep Lewis Black on it. No, yeah, poor Lewis. Poor right, Lewis Norton, you. Stevie, a bunch, <laughs> right. of, bunch of them went to jail. That Rick, Rick could get good tours on it. Hey, uh, Alex, Alex, you're on the fence. Hello, hey, Alex. Up, hey. Uh, card number 8735. Hoo-ah, hoo-ah. Hey, how about the Dale, Dale Earnhardt car? Oh, jeez, can you imagine on the line to see that? You got Molly Hatchet playing the whole time. People with coolers. You're playing, just standing in line. You're playing Leonard Skinner Freebird, and guys are just holding each other crying. How about another one? How about the WWE? Hey, this is where three hit the wall. 
<laughs> All right, say it, buddy. The black armbands, all with three on them. Why even, uh, why even bother going on? Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Here's uh, Tom. Tom, you're on our round of Fez. Hey, Tom. Hey, what's up, buddies? Hey, buddy. Hey, I got one. Um, how about the bus that Gary Busey stayed in on uh, in the movie Black Sheep with Chris Farley? Again, not big enough. Uh, <laughs> too cold. But that was a great... Anytime you're living in a bus, you're, sure. looking, you're looking up to people that are living in a the trailer. They're like, uh, how do I uh, get the wheels off mine? And I actually settle down sometime. Hey, uh, Paulie. Paulie, you're on Ron Fez. Hi, Paulie. Hey, guys. What's up? Hey, bud. How about for the aquarium section? You could put the Susan Smith car with little kids floating around. Oh. Oh. oh in, the, in the death car category. Oh. Yeah, but, you know, she calls that one. <laughs> Where, uh, although I heard that Teddy Kennedy actually was traveling... Uh, with an air tank, just in case uh, he got so loaded one night. You never over. know. Yeah. He goes, you know what? I'm going to get pretty liquored up tonight. I better put on the scuba stuff. <laughs> just to be sure. <laughs> That's how he leaves the house up there. There's so many bridges. So many little bridges. Who so is he? Water. James Bond to be able to get out of that thing? <laughs> hey, uh, Dennis. Dennis, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. Hello, Dennis. Hey, Ron and Fez. 2112. Hoo-ha! Hoo-ha! How about the uh, car Rick Allen from Def Leppard flipped to cut off his arm? Oh, that would be great to have that. And if we could somehow get the arm on the front of the bus, <laughs> and then we put a pen in it, and people can come by and kind of take a pad and try to, you know, get an autograph from the great Def Leppard drummer. <laughs> what do you mean, Rick Allen, you didn't sign this check? It's your handwriting. <laughs> How could that be? I know nothing about this. All right, good one. <laughs> That was freaky in the VH1 Def Leppard movie when they showed the car wreck. The car just tumbles over and over again. Then they show the girlfriend all scratched up, yelling for Rick and staggering through the field. And you see him just standing there in shock with one arm left. And no, the, it ripped right off, huh? Yeah, and the bloody stump, you know, hanging out his jacket. Oh, my God. See, I didn't know that happened. I thought maybe they cut it off for him later. Well, they did. They, oh. they put it on. They put it back on, it didn't take, and they had to lop it off again. He lost that arm twice. And now it's in a museum, from what I hear. It's a Ford Museum. Nice, in Detroit. Hey, Ben, Ben, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, guys. Hi, Ben. Uh, just so you know, some things that are actually there is the, uh, the Kennedy limos there. and the, uh, oh, the one that Kennedy was killed in? Yeah. The convertible? Wow. Yep. Do they let you sit up in the back and wave? Of course. I would, I would climb out over the back in a pillbox hat. <laughs> why, uh, why I'm sitting there holding my forehead. And we'll get a picture of that. And they also have the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. Cool. It's actually a real neat place. Odd thing is, it's the same car. It's Ed very Thomas weird. Edison's last breath. Any uh, other death cars in there? Uh, no, that's the only other thing. They're not the James Dean car or something? Some, somebody has, I think, an Al Capone car that it got shot up in. Oh, interesting. Or one of those type of things, like a Pretty Boy Floyd car. Yeah. And they also have Charles Kuralt's on-the-road uh, tour van, which must stink pretty what, bad. What's it cost to go to this Ford Museum? It's it's nothing. It's like, you know, 16 bucks. It's it's more than just a museum. It's, it's a whole 16 place bucks. where they collected a bunch of crap. I want. I want to. I want to. I want to drive out of there today for sixteen bucks. <laughs> All right, say Have a good night. That's crazy. How about the Jan and Dean car? Jan and Dean car, another good. Uh, well, that wasn't a death. That was a retard car. Yeah, a retard car. So that would just have people who got in accidents and became retarded afterwards, not killed. Right, not killed all the way. I'd love to have the uh, Jane Mansfield uh, car. Remember, her head popped off. Right. Yeah. And maybe on the dashboard. something where you're like you could like hit it like uh, like a uh, like a, one of those old crazy cars, you know, and then the head flops out and hopefully hit some bowling pins. The kids would love that, huh? Because that's what happened. All right, so you're looking at more of an interactive museum. Well, you know, that's hands what, on. That, where she got killed was right in front of that bowling alley. Her head mm -hmm. popped off, rolls right out down a lane. And I think uh, it was not a strike. It was like a 7-10 was left. Yeah. If she had had another head, they think she could have picked up the split. Got in the spare. Uh, Donna, Donna, you're on Ron Fez. Hi, Donna. Hey, how about the tree 
thing that Bernie gets uh, blow up all those... Uh, Shut up all those guys in. Is this a train museum? Uh, yeah, you've got to understand here that we do have a... Uh, Come on. You we, have put, a, we have a train a, there. We have a subway museum here in right. New York. We'd love to have that car there. I think it could but you, fit. you don't take it and put it in a car museum. It's people, You're going to freak people out. Well, I thought it was a good idea. I'm just afraid a decent, deserving car is not going to make it because you've got a whole train in there. All right. Take it up space. All right, see you later. Bye. She's just furious. These people don't understand. <laughs> the, You're not going to put the spruce goose in there. No. Even though everybody would love to see the spruce goose. I would. Of course you would. That's your favorite. Mm -hmm. But you can't put it there. Because you were born in 1912 in the spruce goose. And everything doesn't have to be a Hollywood car. We want real cars. Yeah. Hey, uh, Brandon, you're on Run of Fez. Hi, Brandon. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hold it, 6591. Cool. Thanks. Uh, I've got two. The bus, one's a car. All right. The bus is Dr. Teeth and the Electric Man from the Muppet movie. <laughs> All right. That was the greatest bus. Yeah, that was a great bus. Wasn't and that a double decker? Kit from Rider. Kit from Knight Rider. Forget it, Fez. We do have to have Hollywood cars. Kit would be perfect. So would the Batmobile. Oh, excellent day. Have a black girl, have a black girl's DeLorean when he goes into the future. <laughs> We're already getting the Rosa Parks bus in. Right. How many can he have? All right, eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. It's one hundred two point seven. W N E W. It's the Ron and Fez show. Ron and Nine two one zero two seven. We got into talking about... I didn't even know this thing existed, Fuzzy. The uh, the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit. It just has uh, famous cars. Right. Somebody went there and uh, said they have the JFK car that he was killed in. And the latest inductee, the bus that Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on. I wonder if uh, she'll show up with that. Well, she's living in Detroit, so I'm sure they'll make a big deal about it with Is her. Is that right? Yeah. They should have her drive it in speed style right through the window. <laughs> what that'll do Joe here tonight. Hello. is when they pick her up, just see if she'll get in the back seat of anything. <laughs> Even if they have a limo, she refuses to get in the back seat. She's sitting up front with the limo driver. You don't understand, Rosa. The, the back seat is where you want to be in a limo. And as a joke, they give her one of those big game show tickets, and she just walks <laughs> on with, with a $10 ticket on the bus. What's she talk What's he talking about? Do you know? I don't know. What a big game show ticket for $10? You know, like if you win, they give you a big $10,000 check. It's six feet tall. Now, you just said $10. Well, they could give her a $10 ticket, no. life size. <laughs> no, by ticket, you mean check... No, I, I mean... A giant check you call a ticket? Why would they give her a giant ticket to get into this museum? Well, I'm completely lost. Okay, here's the thing. They gave her a ticket for not wanting to move out of her seat. So oh. I... A oh, okay. I'm setting this up now. I, I, I am, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to be relentless and dissect this joke until I figure it out. Okay. That's that's the only thing we can do with him, Fezzi. <laughs> All right, here's some people. They everybody's interested in this for some reason. I don't understand, but all right. Uh, hey, uh, Steve. Steve, you're on uh, Ron Fez. Yeah. Hey, Hello? Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. I'd nominate the uh, van down by the river that Chris Farley used to live in. All right. You know that was just a joke, and there wasn't really a van <laughs> or We're, a river. Right. We're gonna need real things that actually exist. Right. I'd like to see the SUV they threw Elian Gonzalez's little ass in. When they uh, bum rushed that house in Miami. But was that car famous enough, as famous as the guys who grabbed them? You know, the car itself has to be the fame. Al, you uh, thought we were joking about that hard rock call? No. Why don't no we that get was the, no joke. Why don't we get the Al Dukes fag mobile? <laughs> you have a fag mobile? You big fag. Fag <laughs> mobile. All right, your, mic, what? your mic wasn't even on. Into the, into the mic. Make believe it's meat. All right, come I on. I said I don't have a fag mobile. <laughs> then how do you leave the fag cave? It's no fag cave either. <laughs> Where do you live? <laughs> I live in a home. Oh, and then you slide Stately, down. Stately Duke's Manor. Then he slides down the fag pole into the cave. Ah! Obviously, he doesn't live in the cave part. No, nah, that's stupid. There's just, you know, <laughs> you slide fag down. computers and stuff down there. <laughs> you slide down the pole butt first. I'm gay. I'm straight. What a coincidence, a gay man living in a town that has the name Wood in it. <laughs> All right. Now, you're saying you don't slide down butt first when you go down a pole? You go face first down a pole? No. I, I never go down poles. Head first? 
No, I can't remember the last time I went down a pole. All right, but if you did. Uh, Rory will need I never go down poles. Uh, edit out the never. <laughs> I go down poles. <laughs> Ass is up. <laughs> Joe Pooh, that is your boss, Al Duke, All right, and, and you've got to start showing respect. And here's another thing, Joe, we're into a bit here. And now it's once again got back to everybody calling Al gay. I just want to know if he came in on the fag hag mobile, that's all. No, I did not. He's not I, a fag hag. I take the regular train in. All right. Love it. You pull a train in? <laughs> what? No, no. The mass transit. Ass transit? You what? Call, you call your boyfriend's mass transit? You know, uh, Al... Here's the situation. I sent you to get his food. Right. I in the know. meantime, I'm starving. I didn't have any dinner tonight. And I'm hearing you and Al and Joe do the same thing you're doing every show now. I'm just trying to defend myself. I, don't want, I wanted food. I don't want you to defend yourself. He's your employee. Tell him to shut up. Hey, Hard Rock Johnny. <laughs> Hard Rock. Are you on? Oh, we lost him. I had his name up. Ah. Uh, he's, you know, he's producing the show. Great. He's calling us. Al blew it. Again. <laughs> All right. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Hey Joe, Joe, you're on run of feds. Hey yeah. Joe, I've seen this one going up the uh, Garden State Parkway once in a while. How about the Ghostbusters car? You really saw that thing driving around? Oh yeah, a couple times. I would love to see the Ghostbusters <laughs> car. It's out and about every once in a while. What are they doing with it? Who owns it? They Why drive it around to car shows every once in a while. So I think I... there's a couple of them too. Oh, there'd have to be. They had to mass produce them. How about the uh, Animal House car? That was the one nice that, got that got destroyed. Mm. The one they put in the parade after oh, they customized the one, yeah, it. yeah, they customized Yeah, all right, thanks. <laughs> See, a lot of people, they're only getting their cars from movies. Please. Right. You know, there's the Princess Diana car. Oh. Is there anything even left of that? Well, you take, could, just take up a very small corner. You could take a toast or beat it with a hammer and people would tell people it's that car. We could have a Princess Seth. Section and have Princess Grace's car in there too. Oh, God bless her, huh? Yeah. Not easy uh, driving for princesses anymore. <laughs> no, uh uh. You gotta be very, very careful. Um, hey, Michael, Michael, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Michael. Michael. How's it going? Oh, good. It's what, going good. What can we do for you, Michael? All right, I was gonna say uh, one thing, but now I changed it since you said about the movies. What about the Pope Mobile? Oh, I would love the Pope Mobile to be there. The Pope Mobile would look so cool. It's my uh, real plans to go back and see my parents in a Pope Mobile one day, Fezzes. <laughs> and just drive by waving. Yeah. You don't even have to stop. And I don't have to take the insults <laughs> or anything else. Yeah, because that'll deflect them. I am uh, going to be with my family on uh, Thanksgiving. You're going home too, right, Fez? Well, you know, I have moments of, yes, I'm going home. I'm going to do it. And yeah. then uh, I have moments of, how in the world am I possibly going to get my fat ass on a plane? Right. It comes and goes. No, I, I, guess it'll, I guess it'll come down to which feeling I'm having on Wednesday. Here's the weird thing that I uh, heard, and it, it just goes to show you how. And I overheard this. I'm in a restaurant today, and the guy at the next table uh -huh. is yelling it to his friend. Right. He goes, you know, people are so worried about flying, but with all the driving, they said 589 people will, will die in cars over the Thanksgiving Day holidays. But nobody's worried about that. No one's scared Yeah, of being one of the 589. Right. Which is more than a plane's probably going to hold if a plane goes down. Yeah, that would probably be, what, two big Airbuses. Right, yeah. It'd be 589. To reach that number. So you couldn't be safer, Fez. Yeah, that's true. I just keep trying to tell myself that, you know, thousands of planes are flying and making it safely every day and that... Not every plane has to have a terrorist or mechanical situation on it. What are you most afraid of? Uh, that, honestly, right now? Terrorist? The tail falling off. That's what, that is the main picture in my head. I, as I think about it more and more, and you see me start to sweat. Yeah, I see it. I, um, I picture taking off and all of a sudden feeling that rattle and that vibration that we heard about. From the black box. So if you don't feel that immediately, you're going to feel good. Yeah. You know if you're up past three minutes, you're fine the rest of the trip. Well, you know I time flights anyway, Ronnie. Yeah. I, can, I take a stopwatch with me. At what point do you start to feel relaxed and good? The Usually 45 minutes in. I can start feeling human again and maybe start looking at a magazine or enjoy my soft drink. Are you going to do some pills before you go up this time? I don't know. I think you should. 
And I never tell you to take pills, but I think this time you should, because you're extra nervous. Yeah. I like to get you loopy. Either that, or let's uh, have you smoke a big fat joint and do two lines of coke and get on. <laughs> I don't think that'll happen either. So, right now, very nervous. So, right now, I would, if I had to pick right now, I'd probably say no. No, you wouldn't fly if it was leaving right now. Right. So you're leaving in a couple of days. You're leaving on Wednesday night. Right? Yeah. Well, Wednesday morning is when the flight's supposed to so be. So we're not doing the show on Wednesday? No. Nah, <laughs> All right. We, nah, you, we got a short porch, baby. Well, you the lucky bastards are going to get some uh, really nice uh, best ofs this week. Oh, yeah. You're going to love it. There's a bit about a car museum right. that is going to play, uh, you know, I believe, on Wednesday I don't that you're going to love. I don't want to start fighting with Al, but Al, go back and pick some good best ofs. For while we're away, and uh, there's two things I don't want. I don't want them to be just played the other day. Right. I don't want them to ever have played on the weekends. Because people will write and complain to me about this, Fez. Uh -huh. And you and I have nothing to do it. What will happen is during a vacation, a bit will play during the week, and then again on the weekend, or vice versa. And I don't want every bit to focus on Al Dukes. Right. And people are saying... Those best ofs all go from one Al bit to the next Al bit to the following Al bit. You know, that has always happened. Throughout our career, whenever we take a vacation, whoever was in charge of the best of, it turns out to be a best of that person. Right. And I don't know why people do that. And uh, lately, that is what everybody... All right, Pantera writes in on the instant feedback. Why don't we let the listeners pick, pick them via email? No, that would be exciting and fun. That's a good idea. I like that. Or even just maybe some sort of list tomorrow evening. I burnt the uh, trail, writes in. What about some dot com best ofs? And then he writes a big, please. I don't like the fact you please think. <laughs> but what about some dot com best ofs? That would be fine. Because that's been a long time and some of the people didn't hear those shows. Mm -hmm. But I have a chance to hear them. Al, has any of the best of stuff been picked out yet at all? No, I'm doing it tonight, actually. Is so. it going to be all about you? No. I, I'm listening to the people this what time. What about me? I'm listening to what people? Uh, just people when they call up and they say what, what they uh, want to hear. What people are calling up and saying what they want to hear? Sometimes Sometimes people you're going to be running that. it live that night? So, <laughs> some people... You're lying. You're sitting here lying because you Nobody. heard me. No one ever does that. We're no in one here. calls up and say, here's the best stuff I want to hear, Al. What, are they calling you in the office? No, but sometimes when I'm answering the phones... Now, so. You rarely answer the phones, you, okay? You and if you, you would put them through to us. You you're hardly, not running a show out there. Yeah, you're rarely on the phones like Ronnie said. And, Al, did you forget the little fact that Ronnie and I are here every night and we're taking calls? And that we've never heard any of these alleged calls screaming for an Al Duke's best of? You're no, the no. world's biggest liar. I'm not doing Al Duke's best of. All right, what, what are you looking at? Well, I'm just. I'm gonna go back uh, a while. I'm going through all the stuff tonight. Well, let's pick out some dot com stuff. People love the dot com stuff. Like they said, that was before you guys sold out. <laughs> I think they like it because that was before Al Duke's. I know. That's why I like them. <laughs> I love it. Here, listen to this. Four hours, you won't hear Al anywhere. What about uh, people are always asking me about Dumpy's. Uh, Poetry. When we took Dumpy's poetry. Oh, book. Dumpy's diary. Dumpy's diary. They love that one. Okay. I don't, oh. <laughs> okay. You're too busy getting involved with your special place, son. <laughs> son. Your employee just called you son. Hey, Joe. Joe, you're on Run of Fez. Hi, Joe. Can we uh, hear Al's uh, peeing himself for the fortieth time? No oh, kidding, Al. I am so sick of that. I don't know. Great, what... you peed yourself. Why forty times? Why? Why brag? That's true. I listened to Best of this weekend. It was all you, you big fag. It's not at Is all. that right? Yeah, it's right. No. What were the bits me. you heard? Oh, I don't remember. I Why do drunk. we even want to play a Best of? What if we just let people host the show? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know who I would get. What about callers? Let callers do it. People want to be in the business. Nancy right. Dunnellan. All right, here's uh, Nancy Dunnellan. I know she's available, right? <laughs> yeah, she is. Hi, Rock. Johnny's calling us back. Hey, uh, Johnny. Johnny! Johnny, how are you? Good. I was calling for my best of request. Oh, uh, what's that, Johnny? Uh, I think it was two Thursdays ago, the uh, 7 o'clock hour, please. What was that? Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I just remember it being good. You see that? <laughs> People don't do this, Al. And you make a laughing stock of me and Fez by lying. 
It might have been the 8 o'clock hour. I'm not sure. All right. Thanks, Johnny. All right. We'll try to track that down. I'll find out and I'll call back. All right, buddy. See ya. Sit. I get emails sometimes from people. Oh, You're a liar. What a liar. No, you know, he said to me, oh, I got, I go, any responses from that uh, big ass thing? I, he goes, oh, about 150. I go, let me read them. Oh, I don't have them. He just sits and lies to me all day <laughs> and tells me. <laughs> then one day he tells me, you're too accessible to the listeners because you go online. Cause oh, I'm always nice. Like, uh, I'll go online even at home at uh, Ron and Fez at AOL, right? Right. And then people will say stuff, and a lot of it will have to be, hey, I'm waiting for Al um, to you know, call me back. I'm waiting for this and that. And then I bring it up to him, and it makes him furious. Yeah, because here's the thing. You get ratted out. If you were an honest person, you wouldn't have to worry about any of this. But you're a filthy liar. And no one picks on you that you're too accessible to any man without pants on. <laughs> I'm not a Accessible to that. Yeah, right. Hey, uh, Pete, Pete, you're on Ron Fez. Hi, Pete. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, buddy. I got an idea for best of. Yeah. Do like a whole day of Melissa bits. Sweet Melissa. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Why not just let Sweet Melissa host the show and oh. talk dirty for four hours? That, that would be an excellent People would love yeah. that. People Definitely would love that. Sweet Melissa. It, it would be all new. Yeah, the sweet lines are open. Oh, that would be hot. All right, boys. All right, say it. Thank you, Pete. Uh, Mike, Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Hi, Mike. How you doing, boys? Hey, buddy. Yo, how about we just do a best Polo day? <laughs> Why not just let Polo host the show and talk movies? Yeah, the good, good, good lines are open. <laughs> what are we doing? It's been a year since Polo came up for the Enema joke off. What are we doing about getting Polo back? Where do we stand there? Uh, he says possibly the end of December. Oh, he's running things. End of December, guess where we'll be? Vacation. Vacation. So did you say that to him? Huh. He's got him booked at your house. He better not be booked. No, he's not. House. No, he's not going to your house. But you know when the vacation week is? It's the end of December. Right. That's for the whole station, right? Right. But you're going, yeah, Polo, that would be great. I'd love to have you back. We'd love to have you for the holidays. That we won't be here for. It's just crazy talk. Hey, Sean, Sean, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. Hey, yeah. Sean. Hey, what's up? How about the first Afro show? Uh, last year. It's almost coming up on almost a year, like you just said. Oh, uh, that's the Polo one, right? Is that yeah. the anima joke off? Yep. All right. People love that one, too, for whatever reason. When's the last time you played that, though? Yeah, that one. Because it's been played a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, that one I'm not playing because we always play it. No, well, not we always play it. You always play it. I always end up playing it. We have no choice in it. We don't know what you're picking. And I know grinning? you're getting a lot of uh, calls out there in your cubby hole. <laughs> <laughs> the cubby hole's ringing again. Hey, uh, Evan, Evan, you're on Ron Fest. Hi, Evan. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Um, I would like um, this conversation, uh, this whole discussion, to be on the best of. That would be too I, weird, I, Evan. What um, should the best of be? That should be the best of. <laughs> yeah, I'm finding this very enjoyable. You know, so... you know what, Ronnie, what we're doing now, that's the show. All right, you know, here's what you need to do, Evan. Come sit in our office, because this is what an FM meeting sounds like, where Fez and I bring things up, and Al will write them down, and then file, file them in his ass cheeks, <laughs> never to be seen again. Today I just blew off the 4 o'clock phone call meeting. I Good. just let it go right by. He uh, called me and bored me. Uh, lo luckily, I was able to take a nap. Oh, nice. I, I, I were able to get some sleep during the meeting. You know, here's the situation. If Let's find out. You ever go to a doctor, right? Uh-huh. And he says, uh, you have two hours to live. Call Al, and it'll feel like you've lived forever. Right, yeah. You'll get an eternity there. And you can't wait to die. You can't wait till death comes with its cold sickle. <laughs> then I do, I come in and I hear the message he left for me since I blew off the 4 o'clock phone meeting. And it's like, Fez, this is Al. I just called you to see what's going on. You bored your answer machine. <laughs> and my answering machine broke. It just fell asleep. You're a dull, dull man, Al Dukes. And I thought, okay, unless my producer's calling to tell me what's going on, I'm not calling back. All right, what about this? After the show Friday... We have a little meeting in our office <laughs> to make sure, sure things don't turn into such a fuster clock, right? Right, as what happened Friday when the whole show fell apart at 8 o'clock. He was so furious he with threw, us. He threw the bottle opener. And then rammed his shoulder into a wall. <laughs> what the hell is that about, Al? I don't understand. That was he, a... he tried. This is the best, listeners. You're going to love this one. 
he tried to do a furious storming out of the room. Right. And <laughs> ran himself right into the wall with his shoulder and bounced back towards us. Then, uh, Tasteless Jenny, <laughs> Tasteless Jenny says to me, uh, Eddie Trunk and, uh, whatever band he had that night. Slayer. Nah, it couldn't have been Slayer. That's, this is 2001. <laughs> it had to be somebody else. It was Slayer. They want to, he goes, they want to meet the, uh, girls that we're making out. I'm like, sure. Al comes running behind me and just starts spewing hate at Jenny. And I'm like, what? What did that, what was that all about? <laughs> she asked me first. She came up to me. She said, do the girls want to meet Slayer? And I said, absolutely not. Why? Because they were on our show. I, so what? I needed Eddie's to, our friend. But I needed to make sure they got where they needed to go next. What, and What's that got to do with anything? But Who she, are you? you? You're a bus driver now? <laughs> well, I had to get them the back to the bus. Why? Because they didn't have rides that night, and I was going to make sure they got to their public Maybe they could go home in the Slayer tour bus. They're a adults, right? Right. They like that better than the Fagmobile. Yeah. So then she so asked... So what are you acting like? These are such big guests, they can't go on Eddie's show? No, but... I, well, the thing I didn't like is she asked me first. I told her no. She just kept walking and then asked you. So and she, I told her, yeah, of course. Sounds so, like no problem. So I said... Well, oh, I wonder why she kept going. So I asked her, I said, well, what was the point of asking me if you're going to ignore me? Then she came back to me and she said, oh, your guests have rides home. These guys are going to ride drive them home. I said, absolutely not. You, they're not your guests. You're not driving anybody home. Why Why not let the guys drive them home? I'm not going to put them in the hands of strangers. It wasn't stranger. It was Slayer. Stranger. That's so <laughs> freaking Dallas County. It's so stupid. No one gets that but me. All right, they're not strangers. It's Eddie would be them responsible. You don't think he has guests on his show that can... Not Slayer. Uh, what, what are they? They're, they're what not is your murderers. A slayer. They do devil music, <laughs> Satan stuff. Was it up to the girls? Maybe they'd like to meet a rock band. Yeah, but I think they were drunk. I knew they weren't. They weren't the drunk. Right they were the completely night. sobered up in that meeting, and you and know. they sat in on it. And they were saying how dull you are and gay. And why? They didn't say gay, did they? They did. No. They really? called out a big fag. They did not. Yes, they did. They were too hetero for you. Is that why you got <laughs> mad at them? All right. Stop but see, it. all this stuff, wh wh where you pick your fights are just ridiculous. I know. Here's the thing. Why don't you have stroke enough here to deal with Tasteless Jenny? I got into that, an argument with that her. That she just shoves you aside. Gay no more. Over. I showed her <laughs> who's boss on Friday. Yeah, you show everybody. Yeah, boss. Jenny. So the girls didn't do the show? Yeah, they came in and met <laughs> <laughs> But no one got naked for Slayer. Well, that would have been up to the girls, not to you. And they didn't get a ride home from Slayer either. Slayer meet Biller. Gah! Captain Gildjoy? It was just the way she did it I, that I didn't like. All that right. made you furious enough to throw your shoulder Here, into a wall? Yes. Here's the <laughs> feedback uh, to you, Fez. This is from Lieutenant Boogaloo. He says, Fez, Al has plenty of stroke, but just with other men. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, here's uh, people writing in. What about Hannah Ham with the vegetables? Okay. A lot of that people, was good. That was dot com. A lot of people want in the. Uh... All right, Pantera says, I wish uh, I would have had the chance. I would have loved to met Slayer. Al made me wait down the hall all night, Aww. along with G-Back, Big Jim, and other people. What the hell was that about? Well, because there were uh, there was a pajama party here, and I didn't think the girls would be comfortable if they had all these guys down the here. The girls were out of their minds. And you wanted all the men to yourself. You better not be getting all the men to yourself. Was that a men corral? No. I don't have any interest in guys. I'm going to keep them in the hallway till they're hot and horny, then I'll let them out. Al, uh, don't be using the show for those purposes. I'm I serious. I don't like men. Anymore? Never. Never did. Yeah, right. You don't like men? You don't like women? What are you, the Pope? <laughs> no, I like women. He's the asexual producer. <laughs> I'm heterosexual. Ow, producer. do something about your employee. I'm ready. All right, here's stuff people want to hear. Uh, the time uh, we walked out on Dumpy and let him take over the mic. Oh, that was good. When we met, uh, read Dumpy's love letters on the air. Mm -hmm. Talking about that, uh, Dumpy's dad, the bus driver, who let people... Urinate in the wells of the bus. I like that one. Put Dumpy's dad in the bus museum. What about letting, like I said, let Sweet Melissa host, and I know she'd do a good job mm -hmm. as long as, uh, 
I have people say, these are the only uh, PJ party pictures you got, Al? Yes. Of all the madness that happened that night, you take them just standing next to a wall. Yeah, real nice photos, Ansel Adams. I wanted to see what they looked like. <laughs> hey, uh, Adams. Jade, Jade, you're on Run of Fest. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hi, Jade. Hi. So, I don't, you know, I don't know Al or anything, but I just don't understand why you're so mean to him. Like, I know that he does a lot of things that are stupid, supposedly, but, uh, like, seriously, if he sucks so bad, why don't you guys just get rid of him? Um, well, they're giving him a chance with this new consultant thing. And so far, Fez, what would you give that? Oh, that's, uh, that's not working out. No, that's gotta be considered enough. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a failing effort. And Jade, what this is basically, <laughs> a preemptive strike. This is right. all about best of that's gonna be played this week. And if we can stop it from sucking now, <laughs> we've done our job. We can't stop him from doing that. <laughs> All well, right. then I hope you could stop him. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, right. Jade. Uh, Tom. Tom, you're on uh, Run of Fez. Hello, Tom. Yo, what's up, boys? Big-ass card hold 8459. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's no doubt that, that, that Al's a fag. He pees his pants. He <laughs> tongue-kisses guys on the show. He fights with girls. And he's stalking Ronnie. You're a Faggot. Gee, when you look at it that way. It is. It freaks me out. <laughs> yeah, and, but and add it all up, the evidence. Each one of those was a strange circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> you, my friend, are the strange circumstance. <laughs> You're freaking me out. <laughs> Ron and Fez show. Ron and Fez dot com. All right, here's uh, Josh. Josh, you're on our Ron and Fez. Hello, Josh. Hey, Al, I have a great way for you to improve the show. Yeah. Okay? okay? Write this down, Al. Okay. And Stop you... talking, turn around, and walk out of the door. He'll run his <laughs> shoulder into it. Josh, you should have seen it. This nut tried to do a big, dramatic, soap opera woman storming out of the room. I guess when you get shoulders that wide, Fez, it's very difficult. <laughs> And what were you mad about? Oh, he was mad because girls were coming close to our office. Yeah, we had a oh, meeting right. we were doing. I thought it was because Billy kept saying he's going to use blue paper now. <laughs> and that, here was the situation, which, in Billy's defense, he want, he had an idea. Blue paper for the Billy stuff. Right, color so, code. So we can see it, so Al wasn't putting on, on, under piles of his uh, stupid ideas. <laughs> and uh, while Billy's talking to us, Al was behind his back doing the... <laughs> Just like um, making faces like like Grandma is talking. Right. Oh, yeah. Just let the retard babble. Oh, boy. I know. Now, Another nutty that, idea. Where does that come from, Al? I was probably just frustrated. What? And someone's trying to help you. Hey, I love the new colored paper. It's great. Hey, Steve. Steve, you're on Run of Fuzz. Hi, Steve. Hey, uh, just have a suggestion for... For uh, the replay, I remember on uh, it was the, the first Friday in May. There was a really good riot. <laughs> I will what? say this: Iris is the only character for me that works. Really, Not one other Iris. character seems to be amusing, <laughs> but Iris kills me. She's so annoying. Oh, she gets me going. Frustrating is what she is. <sighs> All right, so you're getting a lot of good ideas here. A lot of iris. None of them on blue paper, but you're getting a lot of good ideas. <laughs> I got blue paper in my little pile tonight, so. Uh, it sticks out, doesn't it? It yeah, works. Yeah, it does. It you does stick see. out. You can see where the blues are. I could start putting mine on colored paper. Why didn't you? Why, why wouldn't that be a good thing? We For put... you, colored paper is borrowing paper from Earl, and that's wrong. Yeah, what are you waiting for, dog shoulder dukes? All right. So here's the thing. We were at a point, Joe, when we were all getting along good there, and then you have to call him dog shoulders. Because, because you said he had big shoulders. He has shoulders like a stick bug. I have broad shoulders. <laughs> no, you don't. You That's have a why broad... we laughed at you for <laughs> smashing it as you tried to fight three women that night. <laughs> and he spikes the, ba the bottle cap opener on his foot and then crashes into the door. You have a broad shoulders. You know, that nurse, uh, Myra, walking around in that... Uh, Little underoos that she wore all night. Right, yeah. That stayed with me all weekend. <laughs> the, 
And then at the end of the night, they were cake stained. Birthday cake stained. You slob, Al. <laughs> you put a huge piece of cake on her. They got mad at me for saying, you don't do that to a woman. You put a little <laughs> delicate piece on. A little piece of frosting. And let them like it. Instead, put a huge hunk of cake. <laughs> he dropped the wedding cake on her. <laughs> hey, uh, Steve. Steve, you're on Run of Fez. Hello, Steve. 2333, what's up? Hoo-ah, hoo-ah. Finally, Steve-O has come back to the Ron and Fez, <laughs> making his 18th call. Thanks for putting me through, Billy. You yeah, remember the, remember Godzilla and, um, Dumpy Lepresto feuds before he left? I uh, they, love that, man, when they, they used to go at it. I think you should run that on the replays. Yeah, that ended in a boxing match. Yeah, and I, I, I called and I said, yo, if it costs $10, you know, less than that, I'm there. Anyways, keep your head up, good show. Oh. Screw everybody else. You... All right, keep reaching for so, the yeah, stars. So, yeah, those boxing Steve. matches were fun. What about the time Dumpy knocked out um, the retarded girl? Mosh in the slipknot? Yeah. I am not a retard. How would y'all like to suck my ass? How did I know what girl you me meant? Well, how many retards did he <laughs> knock out? Godzilla. Here's uh, Inez the Samoan. Inez, how are you, honey? Hi, Inez. Hi, Ron. Hi, Fez. Hi, baby. Um, I just wanted to tell you, first of all, I can't give you my big ass number because Al hasn't sent me my card yet. Al it's sent the damn cards out. Mm. Okay. Sorry about that, Inez. Second, I do don't want to hear Crazy Claire's closing cut off again. Because Why? they played it three times in one month. Oh. Why? I don't know how that's possible, what people are saying, that we're playing best, best of three times in a month. It, you have the weekends. People listen on the weekends, too, Absolutely. some people. Right. And I, I know what we're playing on the weekends. And we're not playing the same things over and over again. Yes, so you everyone's are. a liar but you. Yes. And here's what people are saying, in best of, they don't want to hear something that just happened that month. They want to hear some old stuff. They want to hear the dot-com stuff, the late-night stuff. Or an afro. Hear a nice afro every once in a while. You never play those. People love the Afro shows. All right, Absolutely. thanks, Inez. See ya. All right, here's somebody who understands. He's always listening to it. From Sesame Street, Fezzy. Uh, it's our good pal from Sesame Street. I, I wonder why we haven't made uh, more friends from Sesame Street. I know. We know one Muppet, and he's foul mouth. Hey, Elmo. Uh, hi, you fetish. Oh, hi, you foul mouth, Elmo. Yeah, well, uh, pretty much uh, the word is on the street. They don't like you, mother... What, what is that? What's the word on Sesame Street about us? I don't know. It's only, uh, they... They just don't like you. I, I I don't know what the problem is. Well, you should be talking for us. Who Represent. Who all has the problem with us? Uh, you got that uh, Oscar. Well, he's a grouch. Yeah, he's a grouch. Yeah, you got Ernie and Bert. They, they hate that, us? Yeah, they say that you're imitating them. You know, with the gay stuff. Right. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Al. Yeah, but uh, what I called to talk about is I want to hear some <laughs> crazy Mary. <laughs> crazy <laughs> Mary. Crazy Mary. She was great. Tushy! Yeah, yeah. Tushy! All right, thank you, Elmo. And I uh, said, remember, she's going to marry the horse. The horse's head. Oh, yeah, she was nuts. <laughs> she was insane. Yeah, all right, thanks, Elmo. Yeah, I call forever, mother... All right. All right, foul mouth, Elmo. All right, I'm looking at people go, what about a whole show of fuzz tutorials? That would be fun. Uh, more Kenny Allen. No! Have Kelly, Kenny Allen host. Here's the thing. The pretend lines are open. Kimmy wants uh, Kenny Allen to host with Sweet Melissa. <laughs> no, I say the phrases. Pretending and fantasy, all in one night. Oh, right, here's uh, look who just came back. This is a test of the emergency alert system. We're Rod and Fez, one zero two seven W N E W. Toll free phone number 877-692-1027. I didn't see this over the weekend, Fez, this uh, show. Yeah, Britney Spears live in Las Vegas. Now, I did not catch it either. I know Billy Staples has been just thrilled about this thing, saying it's the greatest special of all time. If anybody saw this, give us a spy report. Spy report. Because uh, I didn't have a chance to check it out. Is they going to run it again? I'm sure they'll run it again. It's HBO. So I'm sure we'll get to see Britney Spears' Jiggle Mania or whatever it was. Right. Several more times on home box office. All right, Billy, come on in here. Staples! Now! Here he comes. You watched this thing over the weekend? Yeah. Oh, absolutely amazing. Amazing? What happened? I can't imagine her being amazing on stage. Oh, well, I went into it a little, uh, you know, I was like, I've seen Britney before, but uh, I tell you, this was unbelievable. Not only uh, away from the obvious, how good she looks in the outfits, she really put on a hell of a show. 
it was it was a, it was amazing the, how well they pulled it off live. It was she, was she lip syncing? Uh, partially, partially lip synced. You could tell when, you know, because she was a lot clearer when she was lip syncing. Then when she was start singing, it was a little softer. But like the technology and the coordination, the dances, it, it was it was I was impressed. And what I was the technology. She have a hovercraft. Oh no, she uh, she was on bungee cords. She was flying at one point. <laughs> really? Yeah, they had this big sled that she went back and forth on, and they had all the dancers up there with her, and she was singing. She and came out of a big ballerina box at one time, this little in this ballerina outfit, which is really hot, and then she rips off the ballerina outfit into like this little white teddy. It's really good. I mean, and for a, it was a typical Vegas show, but it blew away like the Janet Jackson. It blew away that that lame ass Madonna thing, big time. It was like I was very impressed. But by she was it. playing the big room, right? She was playing like eighteen thousand seats. Oh yeah, it was like the the big MGM Grand Room where right. they have all the fights and the concerts right. and stuff. Yeah, it was very, I was very impressed. How I, many batches would you give it? All right, Ad Clay. <laughs> so I love Britney. Ad Clay says she bent backwards one time and where it shot down her bra. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was during the uh, the I'm a Slave for You song, the second to the last song she did. She climbed up on this pole and she just bent backwards, and the cameraman was like right below her head. It was just like a full breast shot right down the bra. Amazing. And she did her patented move when she's kneeling down. She goes like really low in front of the camera again from the crazy video. All right, yeah. we know the move. You don't have to show us, Staples. Sorry, I just get into <laughs> So you uh, love her, right, as a performer, not just as a hot chick. Right? Oh, I have, her 17, I have her calendar in my office from when she was 17, the 17 year old calendar. I still have it. It was, it was from 1999. I still have it up, though. How can you? <laughs> Lamont and talk together, but that's another story. <laughs> Any windshield wipers on your calendar. All right, here's John. John saw it. Hey, uh, John, you're on uh, Ron and Fest. Hey, John. Hey, guys. How you doing? Cool. What can we do for you? I saw this concert at Nashua College VM Live. Uh -huh. And can I just tell you one thing? It looked like a softcore porn. I mean, it was unbelievable seeing her live. But I saw this thing on HBO. And, I mean, there was full-on camel toe. Her boobs popped out at the end. It was just unbelievable. Here's what's weird about Brittany. She gets a lot of six-year-old girls and a lot of 40-year-old men. I know. Going to her <laughs> Talk about a generation gap. <laughs> they were actually saying before the show that most of the dads want to bring their g little girls to the show instead of the moms. No, that's awful. <laughs> Sitting there with wood in front of their daughters. <laughs> like, All right, thanks, laugh. John. Hey, uh, Margaret. Margaret, you're on uh, Rana Fez. Hi, Margaret. You're on the Hello. air. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, sweetheart. It's 168. Give me a hoo hoo Hoo-ah! Hoo-ah! <laughs> you got it. I just want to say Britney Spears is the biggest monkey whore I've ever Aww. seen. Aww. Biggest monkey whore. Is that good or bad? What makes her terrible. monkey whore? Terrible. Terrible. She's jumping around with those jeans down down to her pubes. That that video for Slave for You is just a ripoff of Christina Aguilera. Terrible. Did Terrible. you see pubes, Bill? No, no. <laughs> Everything was on the up and up. As a matter of fact, it was a lot cleaner and a lot less sexy than I actually would have expected, considering some of the other stuff I've seen in her videos and stuff. Uh, oh. But you still you... liked it. Oh, uh, me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. Oh, yeah. Christina Aguilera wishes she could pull off a show like that. No, I Aww, think Christina out far outranks her. Oh, I don't see it. I'm sorry, honey. I don't see that one at all. Oh, I do. All right, talk to you later. All right, bye. bye I had the feeling that was Christina Aguilera's mom. I got no time for that Christina thing. She's over. She's done. Done, done. Where the Britney <laughs> thing, Vegas, is just starting. <laughs> hey, Chris, you're on a fez. Hey, uh, what a concert last night. Uh, how about a Britney showering on stage? Oh. She took well, a she shower to on stage? She sh took a shower on the stage. The finale, not to be missed, to hit me baby one more time. She's standing and in a shower? All of a sudden, the stage, the rains just start coming down. And I thought it was fake at first. Then she walks out through it. She's got a see-through plastic cowboy hat on. And the water's hitting it. Then she rips off the cowboy hat. She's all wet. Like she's in a shower. And she, she grabbed her breast more time than Michael Jackson grabs her crotch. His crotch, crotch. Her crotch. <laughs> her crotch. <laughs> you know, uh, if it was Eminem, it would have been a female Eminem. She grabbed herself more times. Oh, but it was so hot when this water comes down, then she goes into it, and then she's just like writhing around in the shower with all her, her dances were just as hot as she was, too. All these chicks. What is this, uh, you, <laughs> your dad wants to bang me to her? And not only that. She makes you feel like uh, the dad in America Beautiful. <laughs> what was that movie, uh... American uh, oh, um, Beauty? Uh, Beauty. Yeah, American, American Beauty. Kevin yeah. Spacey working out in right. the garage. <laughs> Dude, you see the part where she was dancing in the big, uh, like the big Trinitron screen, and she was like dancing with an image of herself, and oh, she was like yeah. fighting with herself. Unbelievable. The best, 
when it's she was the, on I'm the, the only one that allowed to touch me special. <laughs> and when, when she was on the trapeze, I'm talking the biggest camel toe you've ever seen. Oh, yeah, because she had those little things on the side of her legs that pick, picked up the outfit and made it, like, really tight in the crotch. Oh. All right, say, man. That's how they promoted it, right? Yeah. Britney Spears going camel toe to toe with you <laughs> on HBO. Britney Spears in the whether they're real or fake, don't they look great tour. <laughs> And the best one is when they opened up the show, they showed the outside of the MGM Grand. It must have been a 150 foot tall picture of Britney on the, in the, uh, the uh, white Elvis outfit. Right. Uh -huh. Just up the whole side of the building. The one we've seen on all the subway cars and everywhere else. Yeah, but this was the whole going up from the bottom to the top of the hotel, Fez. This thing was, was huge. And as I would be sitting, I was like, I couldn't imagine driving past that thing. <laughs> you would actually be spanking from the 30th floor. Uh, it was very tough not to, trust me. Did you watch it with Mrs. Staples? Yeah. <laughs> it's on Spankavision. It's the Spankavision tour. Yeah, she sat there the whole time. Why don't they just name the tour like that so that there'll be at least some honesty? Yeah, right. Turn this, they ought to just call it, take it out and turn the sound down. It's Britney Live on HBO. The Britney Spears special. It was really, really, other than the, the spank amateur readings, she really did a great job. She it was uh, the dancing, the choreography. It's the, it's the send your wife out of the house for the night tour. I had to go to bed early. All right. Hey, uh, Rich, Rich, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, guys. Yeah. I, I made the big mistake of watching the uh, Facts of Life reunion movie before I watched Britney. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it was like my penis was going from reverse to fifth gear. <laughs> <laughs> Was how, was, how was that facts of life? I heard it was hideous. Oh. oh, well, yeah, they had two two handsome guys fighting over Natalie. Ah. That's realistic. Wow, this is in the fantasy section, isn't it? Yeah. I saw it, too. Now, did they explain why Joe uh, pulling the check wasn't there? Oh, she was on some big undercover case as a cop or something. But they had her daughter there, I heard. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. brother. And yeah. her husband, who was recording with the Backstreet Boys and right. had to leave. So it's everybody but her. <laughs> They'll oh. teach her a lesson. Uh, oh, yeah, the French chef is after Mrs. Garrett looking at her shake her butt and everything. Oh, it's gross. All right, see you later, man. Bye. So they've, they've grown up, and they're just more desirable to men than can possibly be believed. And Natalie grew up a lot. All right, this on the instant <laughs> feedback about Brittany. It's HBO is the Hatro Batchoff. <laughs> Thank you, HBO. Yeah, finally, HBO is giving us the kind of uh, stuff we're looking for. Soft core porn with barely legal signers. <laughs> <laughs> Did she have a big snake this time? No big snake. Yeah? No big snake. She did. There was no animals involved. but this, Except for you. <laughs> that's true. But the slave for you, the outfit, that was the best outfit. Little, little tiny skirt and this little thing that was barely covering up her breasts. That's the one she le le leaned over in and stuff. Right. It was the Look at Me Double D's show. <laughs> uh, yeah, it should be called Brittany. Well, would you do my breasts first or take it right in my can? <laughs> Tell me. The I'm looking for a bad uncle tour. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Uh, hey Phil, Phil, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. How you doing, buddy? Hi Phil. Hey guys, twenty seven forty seven. Hua hua. Uh, you guys are really low. Um, the last the last thing Brittany did last night, uh, she went on like a stripper pole with handles. God bless her. Yeah, and she leaned backwards, and those things are perfect mountains. As long as she does Britney Spears from Batch Rags to Riches. <laughs> I would love to see special. that. It's a Ron and Fez show. Ron and Fez .com. Well, One of the other things with the Marty Callender produced and directed it. He did a lot of work with Floyd. There's a, if you ever seen a Pink Floyd concert, there was a lot of stuff like that with pre-recorded bits with Britney doing weird stuff. And then you go right into the song. They have a big pig. No, no big <laughs> pigs. But it was like her sitting in a room. No, that's a Christina Aguilera tour. <laughs> The big pig is back. So whatever you want, she's hot. And, you know, like I said, I think most of her audience uh, is uh, a little too old to be watching that thing with her in it. Hey, uh, Anthony, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Anthony. Hey, big ass card holder 173. Hoo I think they should call the Get Your Balls Out. Get your balls out. <laughs> Ladies it's, and gentlemen, Britney Spears. It's literally. Uh, Grandpa, get your balls out to her. <laughs> hey, uh, Tom, what's the name of this story going to be for Britney Spears? Hey, Tom. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, buddy. 
Yeah, I just want to say, after the third or fourth song, Britney said she takes a lot of flack for the way uh, she dresses. Yeah. She's making excuses, man. She, this girl's getting ready to strip. Yeah, she's ready to peel. That's yeah. what they had to call it. I'm almost ready to peel tour. <laughs> oh, yeah. HBO Most Naked. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, sit. Thanks, man. <laughs> 877-692-1027. Hey, Helen. Helen, you're on Run of Fez. Hi, boy. Hey, Helen. I'm back. I didn't know that was you. You're back from Aruba, right? Yes, I've missed you. How it was the one... cruise? It... I didn't go on a cruise. Oh. What were you doing in Aruba? I was bringing back Romeo and Juliet. No way. For the boy. You got some cigars? Nice. Yeah. In oh. every orifice. Only nice. Only Ronnie's, though. That's okay. Um... <laughs> I think that was the name of the Britney tour. Actually, every still, orifice. I actually, still bring them in that way, and I'll smoke them right out that that way. Ooh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna bring them in tomorrow for you because I know you guys are gonna be on um, a little mini break there. Wow, man! And I don't want them to go stale. Nice Cuban cigar but, after Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, that sounds won't perfect. That be nice. Yeah, and, um, maybe I can roll one around. Mm. You know, you know how I feel about you, Ronnie. Oh, Getting all flustered it. again. Stop it, you tease. Huh. I've missed you. I've missed you, and I'm very upset about the pajama party thing. It was nuts. It was crazy. It was completely insane and out of control. Actually, if you want to count it, before the show even started. Can we do it again? Yeah, we're going to probably do it again sometime, but we have to have far less alcohol. Well, uh -huh. you know what the funny thing is? I thought, like, I was the only one that was game about this whole thing. Mm -mm. And now, all of a sudden... Our chicks are wild and crazy. Yeah. I think you've been passed up. No, she's... <laughs> no, I don't me. think so. I think I'm just I'm opening a new horizon to them. You know who was uh, like the, the star there? Was that Nurse Myra that you discovered? Yes, I discovered her. Yeah. Nurse Myra. And you'll love to meet Ice Cream Girl. Who's Ice Cream Girl? Go on uh, WNEW.com and check her out. Okay, definitely will. Yeah. I All definitely right. will, but I, uh, I definitely want to do this again. Yeah. And um, we actually, yeah, get some more chicks, get some nice, innocent girls again, and I'll... Uh, You'll turn them. I'll, I'll turn them. All right. That's it. I'm still trying to turn Lisa. She, I said there's still hope for her yet. No. She's still young enough. No. She I, actually beat up the intern. Yeah, she's so I far. I heard about that. She was really, really the... the I heard about the big, that. The uh, like big, like having a cop in the middle of this room. Oh. I love her. I adore yeah. her. I think she's just... She, she's got to be the tough one. There's got to be the one that, to hold up the uh, the fort, I guess. So I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. See you tomorrow with the... Um, with the goodies. And huh? uh, should I wear my nightie? Yeah. Is that what the whole thing yeah, was about? It, yeah, do it anyway. Yeah. Sure. Right, hey, it how, anyway. Many, uh, how many guards did you score? Um, I was able to bring in... I think I got... Well, they were very... Actually, you know what? Security was so much tighter down sure, there. Sure, of course. Do you know what? I, I actually got through JFK with a pair of scissors in my back. Well, you know, people have to use scissors. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, and at um, Aruba Airport, they wouldn't even let me get in with um, Your my vibrator with the with the, uh, the batteries. Really? Mm -hmm. Would you have to take the vibrator out of it? Mm-hmm. They said they were going to confiscate it unless they get the batteries out. Oh, they just wanted a vibrator. I yeah. think so, too. They had, like, a whole bag of goodies. They had, like... Well, bring, bring that with you tomorrow night. <laughs> We'll try that out as well. Okay. But um, I'll definitely, I'll definitely see you guys tomorrow night. I, I really did miss you dearly, and um, I really miss the pajama party, though. Yeah, we I know that would have been perfect again. for you. Okay, just okay. for me. All Thanks, right. boys. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye, bye bye. Thanks, Alan. I'm so excited about Cuban cigars. That's a nice gift. I can throw out these rat turds I've been smoking. <laughs> Ew. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Hey, uh, Mike. Mike, you're on uh, Ron Fez. Hey, don't, buddy. Hey, Mike. What? Hey, what's up? I just found out the uh, the new tour name for Britney Spears. What's that? The uh, Britney Spears Cleavage to Beaver tour. Oh, I like that. <laughs> All right, same. Oops, I did it eighteen times to myself last night. <laughs> I gotta see this uh, show, Fuzzy. Hey, Jay. Jay, you're on uh, Ron Fez. What's up, guys? Coming hey, Jay. Soon to the home batch office. Yeah. It's uh, the Britney the Britney Spears. Um, dumpster tour. <laughs> home batch office. That's so funny. Here at home batch office, we bring you the best of barely legal blondes. We get Britney Spears. We set her up in Vegas. Hey, do you think she's shaving down there? You think she's oh, completely shaved? Has to be. 100%? 100%. And she, she uh, saved time showering on stage. You don't have to worry about it after the show. It's yeah. on again November 24th, Ron, if you're interested. <laughs> Am I interested? So I care about it. I have it on tape, too. <sighs> Here's, That's uh, gotta be pretty gummed stop up. Making, yeah, stop making noises. <laughs> Here's Ice Cream Girl from the other night. Ice Cream Girl. Hello. Hi, honey. How are you? 
It was so great to have you in here on uh, Friday night. We had a great time with you. Oh, thank you so much. Did you have fun? Uh, I had so much fun. Now, I can't really hear you guys that well. Yeah, I think it's that one line, the one that you're on. Oh, figures. Yeah, line eight. <laughs> we ought to write that down for Pete Johnson. All the shows should. So everybody enjoyed having you in on Friday night, especially Nurse Nurse Myra, who was crazy. Myra, about... Myra was incredible. Yeah. Everybody was incredible. Sweet Melissa, everybody. Yeah. You and Sweet Melissa hit it off, too, when Joe Poole was involved. So that was nice. <laughs> Well, uh, well, we'd love to have you back in again some night, honey. I would love to be back in. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I did not say that Al was gay. Whoever said that, no, I did people, not say Al was gay. People th said that Al was gay because <laughs> of him uh, kind of turning you down there. Oh, uh, well, and then, you know, he's a gentleman, so. And then supposedly he told uh, Merce, Nurse Myra that he was afraid of you. He was afraid of me. Yeah, you have to talk really? to her about that, yeah. He said oh, that no. Would... Why was he afraid of me? I, I don't know. He gets intimidated by uh, strong women, I think. Really? Yeah. Oh. All right, so, <laughs> yeah. But we had, we had a great time with you, darling. We well, love I to had have you a back. great time. I'm sorry that things got so out of control. No, it was fun being out of control. It was just different. You guys were perfect. You All couldn't right. have done any better. Okay. Right. Well, I'd love to meet you guys again, so. Okay. And you met Slayer. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I met Slayer. Right. <laughs> Okay, honey. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Ice Cream Girl. Bloody Friday night. What a wild Friday night. Hey, Mikey, you're on Fez. Hello, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Last night when she hopped up on that pole, uh, I thought of the great, the best name for the tour. It's the uh, Pearl Necklace Tour. Ah, <laughs> nothing like it. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Appreciate I wanted, the call. I, wa I wish to... Yep. The Exxon right, Valdez TV. didn't spill that much. Yeah, they did. They did a special. They were beaming it on satellite to all the armed forces around the, the country and the world. Oh, she do a nice shout-out or come out in some sort of skimpy army uniform? No, this was her serious part of the program. She sat on the piano with a little tinkling in the back when they had cameras at four different bases around the country and stuff. I think there's a lot of tinkling in the background. <laughs> Jeez, shut up, honey. Let's start shaking the cake. <laughs> Shake that cake and shut the pie hole. Eight seven seven six. This is HBO! One zero two seven is the Ron and Fez show. Ron and Fez dot com. In a new ad campaign against terrorism, mum's the word. Really? I thought the word was Fezatorial. Well, well, well. The State Department is going to run ads telling New Yorkers to keep it zipped in an effort to stop people from discussing info that could jeopardize national security. And I haven't seen this many people told to zip it since that time when the cops burst in on our unmarried scoutmaster teaching my troop how to start a fire by rubbing our sticks together. My first clue that something was wrong was that we weren't even in the woods. We were in a motel room just off the interstate. But what really loosens my love lips is the fact that it's hard to tell what's okay and what's not okay to talk about. Keep it zipped says don't talk about the layout of certain New York buildings. So, locations and entrances of downtown offices, not okay to talk about. However, locations and entrances of downtown men-only spas, Okay to talk about. In fact, if you have any info on these, please email to dukes at wnew.com. If you know someone in the armed forces talking about where troops are located overseas is wrong. Now discussing where Jay Leno will be located when he entertains troops in Afghanistan, that's fine. And if we could get the exact coordinates, that would be even better. If government officials are in town and you know the hotels they're staying in, say nothing. If one of those officials is Gary Condit, for God's sake, speak up. You could save a life. Let's also keep quiet about any big events going on, like that tree lighting ceremony. I say this year, we just hide that thing behind Rockefeller Center and keep our mouths shut. After all, who's going to think to look for it there? And finally, let's not discuss how tiny our new mayor actually is. I don't want some terrorist sticking Bloomy in his backpack and running off, or some hawk or other bird of prey swooping down and flying away with him. But you know, this whole thing reminds me of growing up in 
Port Ellis Park, Florida, where our phrase during the war was loose lips sink sheeps. It was kind of a barnyard code of silence between lonely farmhands. But it was there that I learned how important it was to keep things to yourself. I remember one time, Mother was out in the barn with our handyman named Bobo. For some reason, he was desperately trying to get some info out of her. I don't know what it was, but he kept telling her to start opening that mouth. But she wouldn't. I guess her lips were sealed. Although I remember her complaining that it was her eyelids that got sealed shut, and something got in her ear, too, while... Wait a minute. Mama got a sticky facial. <sighs> Anywho, as much as I can't believe I'm saying this, keep it zip, people. Which, by the way, only applies to the city, not surrounding rest areas. But if you do feel the need to talk, here's something we all can say. We're here. We're queer. We will not disappear. This has been my first tutorial. Thank you. Someone get Ronnie. The Fezzatorial replay is over. All right, that's the Fezzatorial. Nice one, Fez. Hi, Ron. What was that, some kind of a nature boy? No, it was a Fezzatorial. Huh. You missed it again. Was it a good one? Damn good. All right, uh, young Steven is... Uh, spy report, spy report. Checking out the Fed for us tonight, Fezzy. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, Steven, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, what's up? Hey, buddy. Hey, I got a spy report for you. All right, let's hear it. Uh, Mick Foley has just resigned. Yeah, we heard he was going to do that. Yep. I and can't believe it. Well, supposedly that will uh, leave room for uh, Ric Flair to come in. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in seeing him actually join me because, you know, he hasn't been around in a while. Yeah, and I think Mick will probably take some time off and then come back and do the whole thing over. And probably. Will. He always does. All yeah. right. See you later, man. I see you. Thanks. Thanks, Steven. <laughs> Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. It's uh, hey, uh, I wanted to talk to uh, Rory, uh, Fezzi, Rory Hamptons, the heartthrob. Rory, Come on a, in, Rory. You had a wild weekend. Uh, you had to go out to Ohio to see, I guess, a friend that was uh, got operated on. Yeah, it was my girlfriend's friend. Uh, she uh, she had uh, some heart surgery. Now your girlfriend didn't want to fly because everything's been happening. You guys drove back and forth. Yeah, it's uh, it's about a ten hour drive. Oh my god! Oh, so out of the 48, I can't blame her though. Out of the forty eight hours that you have off, you spend twenty in a car. Yep. That's oh right. man! And the other twenty eight at a hospital. <laughs> Yo. Unbelievable. It wasn't too pleasant. But we uh, right after the show hopped in the car, drove until oh. about. No, did she drive with you, or you do all the driving? No, she was very tired because she had been working all day. So she, uh, you know, I get the same way with my chick. I was just like, no, I'll do the drive. Right. Yeah. I just, I, I can't relax with her cruise. Yeah. And the next thing I know, you know, twelve hundred miles in full. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the interstate. Right. I'd be rather be the one who drives off the road. Yeah. She, she doesn't know her way too well. So I, uh, I know what you're happening with there. Yeah. But still, man, I don't know whether I, I'd rather die in a plane crash. Then drive for 20 hours out of out of 48. Well, I'll tell you, last night we were driving, we hit some really, really dense fog, and I thought I was going to go off the road. Did I, you? I, I, I really How thought... How was it? Dense like brick? It was... I couldn't, That's dense. I couldn't even see the lines. Could you cut it? You know what? Was probably, it more like pea soup, or could you cut it with a knife? Definitely he, cut it like a knife. You know <laughs> what, uh, Fuzzy? He probably... Well, he was just so tired yeah. that his eyes were fogging up. I've done that before. They just I've driven, over. I've driven so far before that I would go, I'm just going to rest uh, my eyes for one second and open them. Rest them for a sec and open them. Oh. And one time, um, I actually uh, started dreaming while I was still driving. Oh, that's brutal. You know, so I'm seeing things in the night. Right, yeah. I was, you know, I was driving, uh, I forget, some bum F place. We can say bum F now, right? Yes, you can say bum F. Oh, good. That's nice to know. Uh, Rory was dumping us on stuff the other night, and some of it with the women, I understand, Rory. Okay. I mean, they're run, they're, you know, what the, some of the things they were doing to each other, not fit for the air. Right. But some of this stuff, you're getting out of control. Now, I don't want to get dumped now saying it, but I didn't know we, we could do this. We could say oral... But we can't say the full phrase. Correct. You can say oral, but you can't say the next word. Can I say the other word now? Uh, By itself? Now, now you can, yes. This long? Sex. Correct. So I can say sex. Right. 
And then if I let a few minutes go by, sure. La, I, la, 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 la. Give me the big heads up when it's time. All right, it's time. I can say oral, but God forbid I put those two words together, it becomes something awful. Correct. One right after the other. Correct. Now there was no handling those women. You understand that the other night. Right. Of course not. So things are going to happen. But uh who did you like? I'm not even going to ask you who you like best because your girlfriend's listening, right? Probably not. I, she's probably not listening right now. Sure, she's probably sleeping. Exactly. <laughs> sure. Yeah, she slept the whole car ride. She's probably sleeping now. Well, hold she on. didn't get enough rest on the road. All right, we got a couple of the girls on the uh, line here that we can not We can say oral, and then later we can say the other word, but not together. <laughs> right. Here's Nurse Myra. Myra. Hi, Nurse Myra. Hey, what's going on? You. Yo! What? Did you have a good time, you crazy Serbian? <laughs> yes, I had a blast. Everybody's guys. talking about you to me. Oh, who's talking about me? What do they have to say about me? Everybody loves your pictures, and they love that little crazy underoo panties that you're wearing. Oh, God, I hate those pictures. I feel so... Ugh, I feel ugly in them. There's something wrong with you if you see yourself as ugly. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm my worst critic. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to call and say hi, and I had a blast. Well, we'd love to have you back, but only in those same panties. Um, how about a different color? How about that? What color? Um, maybe we'll go with, like, red or, like, something bright. I like that. Okay. Yeah, like how about that. that? All right. Did you get the icing off the other ones? Actually, I had to soak them for about two days because that chocolate would not come out. I'm sorry for that filthy uh, owl. No, that's that's totally fine. I you have took a huge hunk of cake and put it on her crotch instead of a nice little uh, piece of icing for the other girl to lick. Nice little smidgen. You know what? I did not mind it at all. I love ice cream. During the oral, and then later we said the other part. Correct. A portion of the program. No, that's to like totally fine by me. I didn't mind it at all. You and ice cream girl wanted to get a room that night. Yeah, too bad we didn't. But she <laughs> yeah. was great. She was great. Yeah, yeah. She's a very beautiful girl. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you exchange information or anything? Yes, we did. And, I uh, only think they should be able to hook up here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll call service. her. I'll call and her you answer. know what? Uh, unlike some of the others, you can handle your liquor. I appreciate that. Oh, I. <laughs> uh, uh, unlike uh, poor sweet Melissa, oh, two yeah. glasses of wine and she's riding a uh, unicycle up and down Joe Poo. <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet Melissa was so nice that night. I mean, I felt bad, but I mean, she was great. All the other girls were great, and I had a blast. And I wish we could do it every night. A couple uh, of times. She I was... wish we could do it every night. I wish we could do <laughs> nice. the, the Daisy Chain every night. Oh, absolutely. I'm always down for that. Oh, I can't wait till you coming back. <laughs> I can't wait till you come back. <laughs> I'll be waiting for the invitation. All right. All right, guys. And I like night. when uh, we did the bear ass spanking with you, too. What's all you have the spanking? But the girl, uh, ice cream girl doesn't understand a spanking. She was smashing you. I can't believe it. I mean, I went to the bathroom, and my butt was so red. Mm. I couldn't believe it. It was so hot, and it was throbbing afterwards. I was like, what am I going to do with myself? <laughs> she knows what she's know. doing, she's Robbie. Killing she's killing me. <laughs> all right, honey. All right, guys. Have a good night. Right, bye-bye. Bye. Take care. All right, Fezzy, look who's on right now. Sweet Melissa, who uh, had herself at a pitch Friday night. Sweet Melissa. Now, is there another song called Drunk Melissa or Out of Control Melissa? Or Falling Down Melissa or Melissa Walking Around Like a Newborn Pony. <laughs> she did have pony legs. <laughs> Baby pony legs all night. She's kind of wobbly. Hey, Melissa. Isn't that really nice talking about me? Oh. <laughs> that is so, I'm really sorry, though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for a million reasons. I'm really sorry to Joe Pooh. I probably attacked him. I have no idea how that All happened. All right. Now, I know you're saying uh, you don't remember, but you had two glasses of wine. I don't. I, you no, know, no jury would let you off on two glasses of wine. Sure. I know. It's the Al Duke's defense. I you, just, I don't really remember why I would start... I have no idea why I would start kissing him. Because like, he was waving a dollar at you, I think. Oh, <laughs> Two dollars. <laughs> he needs those back, by the way. And kissing is not the word for what you guys were doing. Oh, uh, really? What's it, that? it was like a junior high make-out party. Aw. Uh -huh. Well, um... I'm sorry, Joe Pooh. Joe's over there playing Seven Minutes in Heaven with a drunk uh, sweet Melissa. <laughs> what did you want me to do? I went with it. I went with the bit. <laughs> Good work. I mean... What's up, kissy face? No, oh, hi. 
Now, uh, did you buy your coffee after? Did you have $2 for coffee? No, nah, I walked out. I was very embarrassed. Were you? Why? I don't know. I'd never had someone just walk up and start kissing me. That was female. Well, your dad. What? Yeah, <laughs> only his dad. His face was as red as Nurse Myra's behind. Yeah. I... You remember all that stuff, Melissa? The daisy chain and all that? I do. I None do of that, that embarrasses that. you. Just kissing Joe Poo does. I'm sorry? I have, I have that effect on women. You no, are... I was really... Amnesia kisses. <laughs> I, like, because then it, everyone was, everyone on the board is, not everyone, but they were like, it, Joe Pooh sounded like he was mad at you. So then I was like, oh my god. So not only did I attack him, he's now completely embarrassed. I don't know how I'll look at him, to be honest. I mean, the other girls, they wanted to kiss me. He right. didn't really want to kiss me. He looked like he was hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. It's, it's, it wasn't awful. I really am so embarrassed. Honey, if you wanted to get away, you wouldn't have been able to catch him on your My Little Pony legs. <laughs> because you, you just kept hitting the floor. you got to no, start when you're drinking. No. Lock the knees. I did not. Did I really fall? <laughs> yes, your knees were bending backwards. <laughs> right. Like crazy straws for pins. Like Bambi on ice. Okay, then I'm announcing that I'm never drinking on the air again. So there we go. That's it. Because this is embarrassing. You could be Why, ready to out Dukes. Why just on the air? Well, I, right, I don't really drink often outside of being on the air much. So How much could you drink? The first sip? No, I, I, I would. All right, I'll probably fill up two of those glasses and I probably finish one and a half of them. And from that point, you got that crazy. It, it, that it, much of the amnesia juice. For me, yeah. And I I'm, guess yell it just hits me and I'm I yelling red light, red light, trying oh. to stop her. <laughs> you know what was weird for me? What? Not that, not so much the kiss. You just kept following me around for the next two hours telling me how hot I was. No, I did not. <laughs> yes, you did. Nobody does that. What else? I know she was whispering something in your ear, Joe. I, what was she saying? I'm sorry. Is it okay? I, you're just so hot. And I'm, I kept oh, trying to put up the God. mic to eavesdrop, but I still couldn't hear anything. I said you were hot, Joe Poo. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're so adorable, and I'm so <laughs> ugly. <laughs> All right, honey. Even All with right, the inside-out clothes, he's hot. <laughs> we'll oh, talk boy. to you soon, Melissa. All right, take care. All right, bye-bye. Uh, well, bye, sweet Melissa. You know, she's our friend, Fezzi, and if you can't be drunk and weird around your friends, who can you be drunk and weird around? I got no problem with Melissa. <laughs> she could come in here shooting people, and I wouldn't complain. <laughs> hey, paper boy, you got a spy report. Spy report. Spy report. Oh, yeah. yeah, what's up? Big-time news report, baby, on Raw. Jim Roth kicks the ass of Paul Heyman. And who takes his place? The King is back. Whoa! <laughs> nice. King Lawler back in the WWF. Oh, we be looking for the cat any second. Wow, I don't think that. I'm not sure about uh, that voice. But, the uh, cat is doing oral down in uh, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and I only said oral. Right. I didn't say the other bad word. Minutes later, we'll say the rest of it. Whoa, Rory Hampton doing raw, baby. All right, thanks, Paperboy. You got it. Sweet. All Sweet. right, so that's our first spy report in tonight. There you go. A second, actually. Finally Steven making some uh, big changes they need mm -hmm. to make. The king is back. Uh, remember uh, Paul Heyman was mad at ONA for saying that they wanted the king back and Heyman uh, <laughs> out of that seat? Heyman, to me, Fezzi, better as the bad manager. Right, yeah, put him at ringside. Get everything you can out of him. Have him hitting people with cell phones. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad for the king, because you know you can't lose your job. Your son loses his job, and then you also lose your chick. Right. All in the same week without being a nut. It wasn't going to be a very nice Christmas in right. Memphis until tonight. The only thing is, he enjoyed getting the oral. Oh, I'm only doing that for you. Can I say getting the oral? Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, you can say that. But as long as I don't add the second word, which is what, Fez? Sex. Right. Exactly. No one knows what I'm talking about. No. Now, if we're talking about Jerry Lawler, could we say, you know, uh, getting the scepter? Yeah, that's okay. Polishing the scepter. Polishing the scepter. That's fine. All right, so that's what we need. We need different phrases than we're mm -hmm. using now. We're too blunt, you're saying, and we'll be dumped out by right. the company. Right. Could we say crowning the little king? That's fine. All right. Could we say tipping the head waiter? That's Oh, that's, that's a good. good one. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Can we ever say bobbin for tonsils, or is that a little too blunt? No, that's okay. It's it's getting there, but it's you okay. Because you don't know. Um... Here's Dan has one. Dan, you're on uh, Run of Fez. How are you, Dan? 
Hey, Dan. Hey, what's up, guys? What are you doing for you? Training the pianist. Training the pianist. Pianist, as in one who plays piano. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's fine. Training right. the pianist. Cool. That's that's fine. All right, okay. good. Thank you very much for your help. Or tickling the ovaries. Have, have well, they, that yeah. would be even different. Right, I guess yeah. it's a it's a different act altogether. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Yeah, you know, you're you're using a different phrase. Sure. I like that you're doing that. How about doing a sound check? That's fine. For stepping up to the mic. Right. <laughs> How about consoling the puking chicken? That oh. I don't even understand. Chickens puke? Sometimes. We're talking about something else, though. You mean a rooster? How about doing the, uh, how about doing the man gargle? She decided to do the man gargle. That's okay. All right, well, that's good. All right, here's John. John, you're on Iran Fez. Hey, John. Hey, guys. Instead of swallowing her pride, how about swallowing his pride? I like that. Yeah, okay. That, that works. All right. How about we just call it the Al Dukes? All right, here's one from uh, <laughs> Fish. How about blowing the fuse? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. It is? Are you sure? Yeah. It's tentative. I want you to read this one before I say it. Because to me it's funny and I know I don't want you to dump. I'll let you decide. This is from Ronnie on AOL. What do you think? You can give it a yay or an A. I'll let you be the... the... What if I say A instead of S? All right. Yeah, that's okay. All right. <laughs> so Ronnie says, how about sucking the other side of my A? <laughs> How'd y'all like to suck the other side of my head? All right, what about this from Carl? Enjoying the delicious protein shake. That's okay. That seems innocent enough. Yeah, it is. All right, here's another one. Baiting the hook. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't bother you at all? No, no, it's fine. All right, here's Alex. Alex, you're on the uh, Rana Fez show. Alex. Hi, how about bruising her tonsils? Bruising her tonsils, I think, is kind of sweet. Yeah, that's fine. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. This poor kid yep. hasn't slept in the, whole, the entire weekend. Brushing the molars? That's okay, too. Sure, it's dental. Uh, Tony, Tony, you're on Rana Fez. Hi, Tony. Yeah, I got one. Shining the bedpost. I like that. That'll hey, work. There you go. All right, so a lot, mm -hmm. see, uh, you know, we get mad because they don't bound us stuff, but look how much stuff they let us say. Mm hmm. Here's uh, Steve, you're on Rana Fez. Hi, Steve. Hi there. Yeah. How about talk to the judge? It's time for her to talk to the judge. Oh, you know what that means, don't you, Rory? Yep, I do. <laughs> Your father, right. Judge Hamptons. All right, here's Sparky says, what about being hired to play the violin? Huh. Get it, Fez? A bow job? Ah. Uh... Which is kind of cute when you think a right. uh, violin is a bow and it's you're hired. That's from Sparky from Queens. Nice, Sparky. That's a good one. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Yo-Yo Ma. Yo-Yo Ma's falling down at that thing with his cello. Why don't they say I got a Yo-Yo Ma last night? Leave it at that. <laughs> hey, uh, John, you're on a fez. Yes, toot in the flute and swallow in the melody. What do you think of that one? Toot in the flute and swallow in the melody. That's a nice one. That'll work. Yeah. All right, so that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, gee, some of these people writing stuff that I know. Uh... All right, here is uh, Ralph. Uh, Ralph, you're on Run Fez. Hello, Ralph. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, buddy. How about uh, nursing the one-eyed snake? That's a good one. You don't think uh, that went too far? No, is that's Is that okay. too obvious? I, I, I okay. think my grandma would get that one. Here's uh, Ben. Ben, you're on Run Fez. Hello, Ben. Yes? What yeah. about making the bald man puke? Yeah. I think, Roy. It's okay. Hmm. All right, because some of these uh, are interesting. Here's uh, Eric. Eric, you're on the fence. Hello, Eric. Hey, boys. How hey, about you. using your tongue as a tape measure? What that, do you think of that one? That using seems fair enough. The yeah. tongue as a tape measure. All this is better than saying oral. Yes. Followed by is. that other word. Right. Which really sets it off because right. then you know right. exactly what we're talking exactly. about. Exactly. you got to wait a while before I, you say... Sex. Yeah, it's Correct. stupid. It's just stupid, Fez. But these uh -huh. other phrases are better. Right. All right, we lost one that I really like. Here's uh, Eric. Eric, you're on run of Fez. Hello, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. How about soothing the swollen soldier? What do you think it's of that? It's a tongue one? twister. Yeah, soothing the swollen soldier. Yeah, that that's okay. That's that's acceptable. All right. Okay. 
Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. It's one of those rare occasions. Right. Ask the dump guy. Ask the dump guy. This could be a new part of our show. We'll have music. We'll ask the dump guy. See what he has to say. We'll ask the dump guy. Will he dump me? I don't know. Here's, Here's the dump guy. John, you're on our run of Fez. Hey guys, how about you want me yeah. to do it? Yeah. All right. Right. So we're well out of that. Okay. And, As you uh, can see. Yeah. All right. Everything's fine. There's Al running down the hall. Uh, I'm starving. Huh. Ronandfez.com. Here, Ellen writes in, what about doing a Fez and Mario? All right, that's not going to get on. <laughs> get your balls out. <laughs> Mario still hasn't called after Opie begged him to. Never. He'll never call. All right, King never. Tubby said this. What about eating a hot dog with a bag of nuts? <laughs> you know, when you're thinking... <laughs> it's very <funny>. Tubby. <laughs> King Tubby kills me. Because I get noticed for most of the time, you guys, the answer feedbacks aren't that funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, he had me at the name. King Tubby? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, run it up the flagpole and see who salutes. I don't even understand that. I don't even understand it, and uh, uh, let's check out some ideas. So. Know, what does that even mean? <laughs> I'd much rather say throw it down a well and see if it makes a splash. Uh, Steve, Steve, you're on Iron uh, Fez. Hello, Steve. Hello. Yeah. 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 I got, what about uh, punching the clown? Punching the clown. You got a problem with that one, Rory? No, not at all. What about like squirting or uh, smelling the squirting flower? That's okay. I, to me, only I think if you hear squirting, that's yeah. that's one of those red flag things. Sure, that's gonna perk your ears up they, in a dump room. They teach in dump, in dump school. Yeah. Here How is, long was dump school? Five Hello? years. Wow. Here's Christina. Christina. Hi. Yeah. Yes, Christina. Um, tugging your lug. Tugging your lug, like in lug nuts. Yeah, I guess. All right. Well, why don't you just ask uh, ask me if you can tug my lug? Can I tug your lug? Say it again. Say it again, you little whore. Come on. Say it. <laughs> she said, can she tug your lock? you please shut up while I'm having this with Christina? All right, thank you. From now on. Sure you will. Hey, uh, Bill, you're on a fence. Hello, Bill. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Yeah, good. How about slipping the slob on Snake Eyed Sam? I'd never be able to pull that off. It's yeah, that's much. too much of a tongue twister. Yeah. Oh, a tongue twister. <laughs> that, that's, that's okay. <laughs> she was giving me a tongue twister last <laughs> night. Here's uh, Matt. Tell Matt you're on Rana Fez. Hello, yeah. Matt. Yeah, how about roughing up the suspect? <laughs> huh, roughing up the suspect. It's more of a one-person type of thing, I guess. Yeah, it's know. more of a one-man gang. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, see, if you want to do that, we can go with, like, Club and Rodney King. Here's, uh, how's Club and Rodney King go about 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> hey, Sherm, you're on Rana Fed. Uh, 10622. Hoo-ha, hoo-ha. Hey, 10622. How you doing? Yeah. How about shooting putty at the moon? Shooting putty at the moon, um, too silly. <laughs> shooting, I, shooting with yeah, I understand dog. everything. Oh, we get it. Yeah. Okay. All right, see you later. It's kind of a gay reference, too. It reminds, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of Putty from Seinfeld. <laughs> Please, every time you're having it, it reminds you of Putty from Seinfeld. It's the only thing you can think of. We can, do, we can call it that. Feels I, like an Arby's night. Here comes the, uh, the uh, young lady from Friday night uh, that did the little show for us. Mm. Laura, Laura, you're on Ron and Fez. Hi, Laura. Hello. Thanks so much for coming in uh, Friday night. I hope you enjoyed the girls. I yeah. had so much fun. Sorry oh, you cool. cried. Yeah. Oh, we didn't really cry. I shed more like one tear. Yeah, but that was sexy when you cried because the other girls weren't letting you in on the daisy chain. How about that, Rory? Shedding one tear. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> one big shed, dripping tear. Shedding a single tear. I think dripping is where you get in trouble, Fez. <laughs> right, what do you always say, Laura? Uh, I was going to say gagging on Gonzo. That yeah. Muppet? All right, let's hear, yeah. you, let's hear you use it in a, in, a, in a sentence. Oh, don't make me gag on your gonzo. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Does it work for you, Roy? That's, that's okay. I'm going right. to double check with King Tubby. <laughs> King Tubby does not run the show here. Um, here is uh, Jeff. Jeff, you're on uh, Rana Fez. Hello, Jeff. Hello, cardholder 513. Hoo-ah, hoo-ah. Ah, nice. Uh, marinating the meat kebab. What do you think of that one? That's okay. Again, meat, uh... Uh-huh, right. The only thing with meat is as long as you don't refer to what the meat is. It's okay. What is the meat? Uh... That part I don't even understand. Now I'm lost. Is uh, it dark meat? 
Yeah, uh, it could be. White meat. <laughs> oh, white meat. Okay. Uh, say <laughs> say you later, buddy. See ya. Ron and Fez dot com. All right, here's uh, Tony. Tony, you're on our Ron and Fez. Hi, Tony. Hey, what's happening, guys? Sam's in the salty cobra. Say that again, Tony. Sampling the salty cobra. Nice. Sampling the salty. Honey, won't you please sample the salty cobra? Have you sampled the salty cobra? It's been so long since you sampled the salty cobra. Uh, All right, see you later. Now he has to turn up his uh, radio to hear it. Because he wants to hear Salty Cobra. Uh, Matt, Matt, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. How you doing, buddy? Hello, Matt. Oops, there you are. Matt. Hey, Matt, you're on the air with Ron and Fez. Hey, how about playing with the Xbox? <laughs> playing with the Xbox. I don't know. How about bleeding the black girl? <laughs> What's that even mean? You know, when you bleed brake lines. All right, not all of us took nine months to go fix a car. <laughs> Here's uh, Phil. Phil, you're on. Phil, you're, and I'm not going to call it the black girl in the future. <laughs> Phil, you're on Ron and Fez. Sorry. I got, I got one for Rory. Yeah. Supersizing the order. Hey, honey, why don't you just supersize that order? I like that one. All right. Yeah. yeah. I bet you do. I you want to bang your nuts with that? I'm sure you supersized a couple <laughs> too, son of a bitch. Here's Joe. Joe, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Joe. Yeah. yeah. What's up, guys? Big hard. Big ass card holder 69. Pua. Pua. Oh, you are not. I wish I was. How about cross your T's and dot in your eyes? <laughs> she dotted the eye last night, if you know what I'm saying, Fez. She got her eyes dotted. <laughs> hey, uh, Chris, you're on Run of Fez. What's up, boys? Hi, Chris. I got two for you. Yeah. How about releasing the hostages? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that one. All right. You might not like this one better. Letting a couple of guineas out of jail. Gotta go. See? <laughs> <laughs> the same. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to call it crossing the guinea game plank? No. <laughs> hey, honey, don't you think it's about time you release the hostages? All right, so there's plenty to say, Rory. Plenty. Because the situation has got dumped Friday. You can't say the term oral followed by the word. Right. Which right. we'll say in a few minutes. Correct. Hi, guys. Hey, Fred, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Fred. Got two. I got two for you. Yeah. Choking the Chinaman and fondling the Fez. All right. Uh, Fondling the Fez. Again, some of these, you know, we're talking about, you know, the oral situation. Not you, but at, your, at home, fondling right. the Fez by yourself. Well, I'm glad we could go over some of these with uh, Rory anyway, Fez. Yeah, it's always nice when we can ask the dump guy. Anytime. Right. Now, yeah, you're fair. Unlike Owen A's dump guy who uh, seems to be crazy. What the hell's wrong with their dump guy? Yeah, did he go to dump school? Well, I think he's uh, he's on his way out, from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. Did well, wow. you hear that though? Uh, yeah. Is that the word around that's, dump guys? That's yeah, that's the word around the dump table. So, if this is turning into a dump guy bar, I'm not coming here yeah, anymore. Me neither. <laughs> hey, Fezzy, big 18th birthday tomorrow. Oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, for you, Fezzy, we'll let you have a little slumber party with this 18 year old Carter from RonFez.net. <laughs> It's finally legal. Really? Yeah. I thought that was five years down the road. No. All right, so Carter's going to be 18. Carter from RonFez.net. Can you believe it? Now she can come by and bleach the businessman. What's that mean? Bleach the businessman. All right, you realize Carter's a guy, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want your businessman bleached, Let me I'm you. sure we will ask him. Joe, how many broads? <laughs> You're such an idiot. <laughs> Look how embarrassed he is, right? He's all red, like he kissed Melissa. How many girls you ever meet named Carter? Uh, a couple. Never one. Not one. Carter's a guy's name. Yeah, I guess you're right now. Does she want to come by and bleach the blonde businessman? <laughs> how did you like the little kiss fest that was going on with uh, Sweet Melissa? It was pretty good. Yeah? wasn't the best. Now that I'm not as attractive as she was saying on, on Friday. Well, you're a little dumpy. <laughs> you let yourself go for a young man. <laughs> I'm not going to lie <laughs> idea about that. <laughs> Plus, you're more interested in Carter, I guess. You want I this 18-year-old Carter. I thought it was a chick. We always got <laughs> chicks on the phone. Never. Not Carter. Your boyfriend. 
Except well, you really are training under Al. That's what it should be called now. I'm training under Al. That's perfect. That's the name. Oh, nice. So, Carter, if you want to come by tomorrow, we got a birthday present for you. we got a businessman waiting. Waiting for you to bleach him. <laughs> All right, the joke's done already. <laughs> no. What did you say about Carter? He ran away from the mic at one point. He was so humiliated. What did you say you wanted to do with Carter? Do that line again. Uh, bleach the businessman. <laughs> with an 18-year-old boy. Yeah, well, I thought it was a chick. I love the way he said it with such authority. You know, if she wants to come by tomorrow, she can bleach the wall businessman. Oh, you're such a fool. You should have dumped that. Why? Because I look like an idiot. <laughs> no, you look like someone who's very interested in an 18-year-old boy. I don't think so. He's legal. It's not Nambla. Yeah. Starting tomorrow. You gotta. Can you wait till midnight? I can wait. I can Before wait a long time. Before you jump his bones. Jump his bones. That's <laughs> another one. I think it got dumped. What do you think of uh, Rory in here? Rory in this room? Yeah. He's a little smoky smelling. <laughs> so what? <laughs> he enjoys a cigarette and with some weed. You love the weed, don't you, Rory? Ah, uh, not anymore. Hash? Uh, no, no. Smoking that opium? No. When did you get off the weed? Uh, it's been about three years now. During that 10-hour car drive to Ohio. Exactly. You guys amaze me how you can quit things. i never been able to master this. I just stopped. So you must not have done a lot when you were doing it, right? No, I did a lot. <laughs> I did a lot, and I did everything. Oh, yeah? You love all the drugs? Oh, yeah. You like that Coke? Um, like yeah, that. it was my doing? Crawling around in the evidence room? Crystal meth? No, nah, my favorite was shrooms. Please. <laughs> the mushroom cat? Yeah. We heard about that. <laughs> we heard about that one during Ask the Dump Guy. Right what? before someone went nuts and made a play for an 18-year-old boy. <laughs> so there it is, Joe Poo and Carter sitting in the tray. Shame ah! on me. <laughs> Shame on me. <laughs> You need Alan here to look cool. Do you ever notice that, Joe? Now I do. I need a big fag in the room. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, look who's coming. Like Squiggy. Hello. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> big fag. You uh, turned down any more women lately? No, I have not. Since Friday? Since Friday. None over the weekend. You sure? Yeah. Positive. He's thinking about it. How's your shoulder, big man? Uh, not bad. What do you hate, pushy girls? Is that your thing? Um, just a uh, sh shy person, I guess, in general. So when you're around pushy girls, you want nothing to do with them? Yeah, just, yeah. Probably. How's pushy, how pushy is too pushy? Like if someone, if a girl asked you to dinner, was that, is that too pushy? No, that's okay. What if you see her making out with another broad? That's pu uh, pushing it. You could never be with a girl that's been with another broad. No, probably not. What if a guy says he wants to play tushy pushy? <laughs> no, nothing with guys. Okay. What if someone asks you to bleach the blonde businessmen? No, I don't think anyone <laughs> will ask him that tonight. That's uh, that's that's Joe Poo with Carter. <laughs> well, we still haven't heard Carter say no. So no, Carter's into it in a big, big way. No, he said no. We haven't heard. You may have a chance, Joe Poo. You got a chance, Joe. <laughs> Get that <laughs> Melissa uh, taste off you. Oh, Fezzy, look who it is. It's the mystery date calling in. Oh, yeah? It's Joe Pooh's mystery date, Carter. Oh, nice. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Carter, you're on the air. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I, I'm a guy, just so you know. <laughs> Sorry, big man. <laughs> <laughs> Carter, what do you think? You interested in bleaching the blonde businessman tomorrow night when you're legal? Uh, n no, no, not at all. I don't even know. What, I don't even know. I've never even met Joe Poo. Yeah, well, I got to follow through now because I already <laughs> said it. <laughs> he said he'd do it. He's gonna do it. He's got him a commitment. Ah, uh, there he is. Mystery day. Ah, uh, mute, mute music. Let's just hope Joe Poo didn't get the dud. <laughs> That'd be the most awful date ever. Why is that? Um, I'm just not a pleasant person, I don't think. 
Well, way the Joe gets done with you. Ryan, he's going to calm you down. He knows how to bleach. Yeah, I'm clean shaven. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere? That's so sick. <laughs> Shut up, both of you. I'm so freaked out by this whole room. I'm disgusted. Happy birthday to you, Carter. Thank you. I yeah, think, happy birthday, pal. This, you know, we shouldn't be talking uh, to him like this till midnight, and right. then we'll turn uh, Joe loose on him. <laughs> yeah, I'll put the candle on his cake. What's that mean? Is that another dirty gay that, thing? I'm still going understand? along with the gay thing. Is that no. more gay things I don't understand? <laughs> that he's trying to get past Rory? <laughs> All right, if uh, Carter's going to be with anybody, it's going to be Al. Uh, no. Oh, that's nice. I'm not gay. Yeah, right. What? <laughs> you better uh, put some bass in that voice. <laughs> I'm not gay. That's better. There you go. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, Carter. You got a check? Uh, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you do want to tug my phone cord. <laughs> What's that mean? What's that mean? I don't understand. I don't have the dump guy here. <laughs> Can that stay in? Are you looking for a check, Carter? Uh, not the moment. Why not? Uh, I don't know. What happens with you young guys you're not looking for broads? I don't understand it. What happened to you joining the service? Uh, yeah, aren't you I, I never actually planned on joining the service. I, I thought you were going to be the guy that wanted to kill Bin Laden. Yeah. No, no, that was your idea. Okay. In the Marine Corps. Yeah, that was Ron's idea, not, not mine. Huh. God has a hard-on for Marines. Because we kill everything we see. Did Carter just say that? I think so. No, I don't scream. The deadliest weapon in the world is a Marine and his rifle. You know, every day I get up and I check and see if uh, Bin Laden's dead. Yeah. It's like... What uh, about today, was he? No. Every day I'm just hoping to see Bin Laden dead. Nothing yet. Now I hear there's ten Osama lookalikes to watch out for. Decoys. <laughs> Kill them all. <laughs> Right, how hard is that? Kill every single one of them. Wipe them all out. Why would you want to be a, a, a Osama decoy running across the thing looking like, like him? Why not just put a target on your stupid forehead? Well, here I am, Osama. Now, uh, now, no one kills me. I think I saw this on the Drudge Report, so you never know whether it's true, but the Taliban wants to surrender. I thought they had no fear of death. Right, yeah. I thought, oh, we can't beat Afghanistan. They don't fear death the way we do. <laughs> Carter, I'm proud of you in the Marines. I'm yeah. not in the Marines. I can't wait till you're a sergeant, Carter. Okay. Sergeant it's, it's, Carter! You what I say. In the Marines. What I say. Sergeant Carter. I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> Gomer Pyle. <laughs> and Joe Pooh's going to give you a big going away party. A one-man party. That's quite all right. A one-man bon voyage. For your 18th birthday, you want us to see if Sweet Melissa will give you a Joe Pooh make-out party? Uh, that's okay. You are the next best thing. You have Joe Poo. <laughs> All right, wait a minute, Carter. You don't want sweet Melissa? No, no. I just, I can't. I have to do, like, family stuff and whatnot. Oh, my God. I, yeah, I have that family thing, You're in Al Dukes waiting to be born. <laughs> don't ever say that. It's offensive. <laughs> Believe me, if I was your age and I had a chance to sweet Melissa, my dad would be driving me here. I don't even know her, though. I've talked to her, like, maybe once. Uh-huh. You've heard her on the air a million times. Well, yeah, but that's, uh... So do like 12 million other people. Oh, thank you very much, kid. Wow. All right, Carter. That's happy nice. birthday to you, buddy. Thank you. We have tried, a great birthday, We tried Carter. to get you, you know. We Either Joe Poo or Melissa. There's not more we can do for you. I'm um, taking myself out of this one. The most part's enticing. Joe Poo just makes me want to vomit. All right. Same here, pal. See you later, kid. Then quit hitting on him. Hey. <laughs> Semper Fi, young man. <laughs> See ya. Kill them all. Wipe them all out. All right, uh, hey, we got a chance. Al Dukes has put together a game show, Fuzzy, that he wants to play for us. Oh, nice. Uh, it's some kind of a chance. I think we've got a bunch of DVDs to give out tonight. That's right. we got Planet of the Age DVDs starring Mark Wahlberg. All right, also, we've got um, Friday Fright doing his uh, Let Me Be on the Sports Guys gig. His uh, Please, I Want to Be on the Morning Show minute. How many does he have to do tonight? One or two? He's got two. Okay, two. We'll have him do that before the end of the show. Now, let's turn them in tomorrow, okay? You got a couple for the kid? Yes, I will. All, All right. right. We'll turn them in before we go on Thanksgiving break. 877-692-1027. We're out of Fez. Ron and Fez dot com. We're out of Fez. 877-692-1027. Al Dukes wants to debut a new game show. We got Planet of the Apes DVDs on the line. 
buy the DVD or rent it on video beginning tomorrow. And that, of course, is November 20th. Also, Freddie Fright wants to do a Mad Minute audition for the Sports Guys. And I believe Joe Poo is going to sing Happy Birthday to Carter, Marilyn Monroe style. Uh, actually, we've got this um, contest going on now. We're going to be doing parody songs. Your chance to win an MP3 player. And also, you know Fuzz and I are looking for a parody song guy. Yes, I want to be part of the team. Yeah. That we can depend on. Somebody that can actually write funny parody songs. And here's, here's the situation. I don't care if it's just you on a piano or a ukulele. I'd rather have a funny song than somebody who can go out and do great production and sound exactly like the band and have backup. I'm not looking for all that stuff, Fez. No, we're looking for someone who can get the job done and quick. Yeah, if you can write funny stuff on a Casio, that's great. Make sure you send it in to us here. First of all, you can always just send the MP3 to Ron and Fez at WNEW.com. That's R-O-N-A-N-D-F-E-Z at WNEW.com. Or you can mail it here. The address is on WNEW.com. It's Ron and Fez Show. WNEW, 888-7th Avenue, 10th Floor, New York, New York, 10106. So when we get your stuff in, we'll start playing on the air. And uh, the situation is this, Fezzy. We are looking for somebody. So if you've got a friend who you think uh, can write some funny songs, if you've done it yourself, think you can write funny yeah. songs, send it in to us. Uh, and even if you need any more instructions or whatever, go to Ronifez at WNEW.com. Now, Joe, you said you wrote a parody song? Yeah, Monkeys with Monkeys in Suits is back. And I got your a, band, Monkeys in Suits. I, I forgot partner. about Monkeys in Suits. Now, I remember you had your son, Joe Jr., playing drums. I had him there, and I had Dumpy on lead vocals. Sometimes. Right. But right. the band yeah. broke up. It wasn't working out. Sure. Egos. Yeah. All right, it so all happened after the tour of Australia. What happened there? Something went wrong. I don't know, somebody got kicked with a kangaroo. All right, let's hear you. What's the name of your song? It's um, it's it's a tribute to Al Dukes. All right, tribute to Al Dukes. That's Aww. nice for you, Al. That is nice. Yeah. That's Finally, great. somebody being nice to Al. Finally. All right. Here is Joe Poo's entry into the I Want My MP3 song parody contest. Stopping in old He rides all night On a big fat bone He's a gay boy On a steel dildo He rides He wants it Al's a big fag Wants meat Al's a big fag Nice. Wow. Sometimes oh, there's pays. more. Even Al can't get gays. All the guys he does always go the separate way. Al likes the butt buffet. He doesn't care that it stinks. And at times when he's alone, he dreams of insane. He's a gay boy On a steel dildo He rides Or he wants it Al's a big fag Wants meat Al's a big fag Is that it? Bon Jovi fan since day one Bon Jovi fan since day one Why wouldn't Bon Jovi fan since day one <laughs> Wow <laughs> That's uh, Al's a big fag, and it's uh, it's Joe Poo's salute to uh, Al Dukes and, of course, Bon Jovi. Sure. And at uh, one point, Joe just throwing out insults, not even worrying about <laughs> singing or rhyming anymore. No. Hey, he likes a big butt buffet. Yeah. Sure. He eats crotch. Because Al's a big fag. You are a big fag. <laughs> All right, so under the guise of entering right. the I Want My MP3 competition, yeah. you have launched a scathing musical attack at Al Dukes. Did it win? Uh, sure. No. 
Uh, Bayonne loves Joe Poo. <laughs> you know, uh, Springsteen's getting old. Maybe they need somebody new in Jersey. Yeah, I'm calling from Bayonne. Could you get on the latest hit from Monkeys in Suits? Could you play that three times an hour? There's a little something in this uh, record sleeve. Could you move that into Bayonne Heavy Rotation? I like to thank Pooing Staples Productions uh, with the help out of Monkeys with Suits. All right, uh, when you hear that, uh, Al, does it make you feel proud? No, it's not proud. More gay? No, not gay, but I'm just gay. I'm gay. All right, Al, when, I'm did you, gay. when did you start talking like a caveman? <laughs> no, not proud. Not mm. proud. Oh, not proud. Oh, bad. Monkeys in Suits bad. Get monkeys in suits. Take suits from monkeys. Fire burn Al. Al don't like fire. Monkeys in suits start fire. Burn Al. Only God <laughs> make fire. Why monkey and suit call me fag? <laughs> no fag. No monkey. Al's a big fag. <laughs> Wasn't it the truth though? Yeah, I mean, you can't, I mean, literally it always comes back to oh, lyrics. Oh, sure. Historically accurate. Sure. We're not saying that. Will it win the competition? Doubtful. I'm no Bon Jovi. <laughs> you better. From day one. You better. Al, when are you going to step up and do something about the uh, employees and the lack of respect you're getting? All right, let me read some of these uh, instant feedbacks, Fuzzy. Uh... The contest is over. Joe Poo won. <laughs> I didn't know. Johnny O says, I didn't know that Jack Klugman sang. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's great. All right. All positive feedback coming in for you. Yeah. And monkeys in suits. One after another. Congratulations. Hey, Joe. Joe, you're on our run of us. Hello, Joe. Hey, guys. How you doing, buddy? It's nice to know they're letting the uh, throat cancer patients into the music biz. <laughs> Al doesn't have throat cancer. He's Al's talking about you. A big fag. There you go. That's it. See ya, buddy. All right, so anyway, that's what we're going to be doing uh, throughout the month of uh, December, I guess, Fuzzy, with our uh, parody song contest. We want somebody that can do what Joe did, but only funnier and in a better voice. Sure. And produce on the fly. Well, you know, actually, he's got a good point here. Uh, the fact that he doesn't uh, exactly have a great voice doesn't matter because the song was kind of cute. <laughs> Unconventional. It's the I Want My MP3 Song Parody Contest. Email your MP3s to Ron and Fez at WNEW.com. Or if you want to mail it in, check out that address at WNEW.com. And they all don't have to be uh, about Al being a super fag. <laughs> like they won't be. <laughs> yeah, they shouldn't be. Well, it's the truth. People like to write about the truth. <laughs> that is true. You're the black man CNN. <laughs> That's what you are. You're the black man CNN. Right on, brother. That's the only way that they are getting their news. <laughs> All right, we told Friday. Friday could do one of his damn magic moments or whatever the hell they call it. Bad minute. <laughs> but these are going to be shorter. How long do you say these are lasting? These are about 45 seconds. With you, when you do it, it seems like an hour and a half. <laughs> Does it seem this uh, long on a sports guy show? No, it seems to go by nicely there. Al, do you know if the sports guys are familiar with this kid wanting to be on their show yet? Have they heard about that? Actually, I uh, had talked to one of their producers. I mentioned that I was going to have a tape for him. How'd you get the appointment? I saw him in the hallway. Oh. Oh, boy, they're not going to like you anymore. <laughs> Sorry, Friday. All right, Friday, are you ready? Yes. All right, you know the. We'll give you the intro, and then you jump right in, right? Yes. All right, what mic are you on? All right, I see you. Here we go. Sports guys, mad minute. This is Pete Johnson Jr. with your Mad Minute. The Jets continued their dominance over the Dolphins with a resounding 24 to nothing win. A first quarter, Aaron Glenn 60-yard interception return for a touchdown, followed by a testimony to Cole's scoring pass, and a Victor Green 63-yard interception return for a touchdown, added up to a blowout. That's eight consecutive victories for New York over Miami. The seven and three first place Jets have a bye next week. The Giants hope to repeat the trouncing they gave the Vikings last January tonight in Minnesota. New York is looking for their third win in a row, but this game will be different as the Vikings play much better at home. 
Minnesota is coming off two blowout road losses, but we'll try to get things going at the Metrodome where they are 3-1. and one. Michael Strand hopes to continue his great season. He already leads the NFL with 15 sacks. At, half, at halftime, the Vikings will retire the number of Corey Stringer, who died in the preseason from heat stroke. Barry Bonds win the, wins the National League MVP award, his fourth. That's a major league record. This has been Pete Johnson Jr. with your Mad Minute. All right, Friday fright. You stumbled all over it, yeah, buddy. I know. I you know. fell down all, the, all along the way. Hey, Pete Johnson Jr., why don't you go do something useful like fix line eight? All right. <laughs> We're trying to help Freddie Frey. I think you just went way too fast. Yeah. What's the hurry? That first part about the Jets, I couldn't understand what you were talking about. You were going so fast, and the names were starting to blend together. Yeah, I've been told that before, that I sometimes talk a little bit too fast. Really? Yeah. You've been called too fast and not too slow. Right. Odd. How, okay. about, how about the Giants score? They're playing right now. I'd like to know the score. Well, this is supposed to be a morning update for the today. The Giants hope yeah. to repeat and beat the Vikings again, even though they're playing now. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, That's that, in my mad minute. Right. The problem is that they're going to, you know, I know. already have the answer by tomorrow. Right. Yeah, I know, but this, um, I wrote this as a morning update. Right. Well, if it's tomorrow morning, you would have the no, score, wouldn't you? Monday morning. Uh, so we got to tell them to get back in uh, from, time. From the Jets game yesterday and the Giants game tonight. So if they want old sports news. <laughs> Thank you, Almanac you. boy. <laughs> And the Olympic hockey team. Do you believe in miracles? 1980, they won. Will the Yankees repeat? Well, we'll soon find out as we look forward to the Subway Series. I know I'm on the radio and you can't see me, but I'm wearing a Mets hat. One half Mets, one half Yankees. <laughs> I'm Pete Johnson, Jr. Earlier this century, Joe Theismann got his leg broken by Lawrence Taylor in a critical game. I wouldn't want that to happen to me. Would you want it to happen to you? No, never. That's I'm what P. Pete Johnson Jr. That's what Pete Johnson Jr. calls one bad break. I'm Pete Johnson Jr. and I'm robbing my taint. <laughs> Why is that your out cue? <laughs> That's the most ridiculous out cue catchphrase hook I've ever heard. <laughs> that should be your out cue. Why are you saying I'm rubbing my taint? So people will remember it. <laughs> oh, so that's going to be the new Mel Allen. How about that? <laughs> This is Pete Johnson Jr., and I'm rubbing my taint. All right. Do it again, Friday Fright. Okay. Slower. Slow it down. And finish with, I'm Pete Johnson Jr., and I'm rubbing my taint. All right? I don't think I want to say that. Either. All right. It's up to you. Don't be mean to me. I love you guys, and I love Red Grange, and stop it. I will cry. That's been my mad second. You're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> just an absolute moron. Freddy, Freddy, are you ready? This just in seven months since plane went down. More, more updates as we find out. I'm Pete Johnson Jr. and I'm rubbing my taint. <laughs> no matter whether it's important news or not. In breaking news, Pete, <laughs> Pete Rose gets kicked out of baseball for betting. Thank you. And, and then later in the news, a youngster, Charlie Hustle, man plays his first game tonight. Broadway Joe decides to make a guarantee. Sounds foolish. How will it turn out? Sorry, Broadway Joe. No way you're going to beat the, beat the Colts. I'm Pete Johnson Jr., and I'm rubbing my taint. <laughs> All right, taint rubber. Are you ready? Yes. All right, slower, and don't forget your new out cue. Okay. Ready? Yes. Sports guys. This is Pete Johnson Jr. with your Mad Minute. The Jets continued their dominance over the Dolphins with a resounding 24 to nothing win. A first quarter Aaron Glenn 60 yard interception return for a touchdown, followed by a Testaverde to Cole scoring pass and a Victor Green 63 yard interception return for a touchdown added up to a blowout. That's eight consecutive victories for New York over Miami. The seven and three first place Jets have a bye next week. The Giants hope to repeat the trouncing they gave the Vikings last January tonight in Minnesota. New York is looking for their third win in a row, but this game will be different as the Vikings play much better at home. Minnesota is coming off two blowout road losses, but we'll try to get things going at the Metrodome, where they are 3-1 this season. Michael Strand hopes to continue his great season. He already leads the NFL with 15 sacks. At halftime, the Vikings will retire the number of Corey Stringer, who died in the preseason from heat stroke. Barry Bonds wins the National League MVP, his fourth. That's a major league record. I'm Pete Johnson, and I'm rubbing my taint. Would you take your foot off the console and stop doing that? First of all, you're Pete Johnson Jr. I'm right. Sorry about that. You're not Pete Johnson. You're not the legendary Pete Johnson. Second of all, you went out and read the same damn thing. Yeah. I told us you had two. I do, but I want to just read that same one slower. 
I added rubbing my taint. Well, you I... effed up by saying that you're Pete Johnson. You were fine up until then. We can't go edit in a junior in there. It'll sound crazy. And tell me this. What the F is a woad wash? <laughs> is that woad wash? Woad wash. No, it it's... It's coming out woad wash. Maybe if you read it backwards, Paul McCartney will understand it. <laughs> you want to do a reference in the 90s at least? All right, you're going to get one more at the end of the show tonight, okay? okay? All right, because we can't take another one tank. right now. That's insane. Okay. And you're Pete Johnson Jr. And come I back with a freaking again. giant score, would you? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Is that such a bad idea to give out the giant <laughs> score? I'd love it. All right, because I hate to see him get a woad was. <laughs> Ah. Poor son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, like he stands a chance. I'm going to bring Lisa in here to scare the hell out of him and knock that jaw off. <laughs> I have not been able to say woad was ever since I was hit twice in my jaw, in my face. This just then, Sonny Liston is down. Cash is clay. New heavyweight champion. <laughs> and also, I'm sad to report, John F. Kennedy died this afternoon. Well, I'm Pete Johnson Jr. and I'm rubbing my taint. I wish I had been punched in my taint. Instead of my jaw. I'm afraid and embarrassed to say that we're Ron and Fez. <laughs> Ronandfez.com All right, if, if grape, ape, and tape wasn't painful enough, we're Ron and Fez. We promised Friday, Friday, he could do one more Mad Minute audition for the sports guys. Bring me the big knife. I'm going to cut my throat. I won't! I won't bring you the big knife! Bring me the big knife! I'm gonna cut my throat! Freddy Fright, are you ready this time? I am ready. Because this is it. No more chances after this one. I know. Take your time. Be a human. Alright? Yes. Remember your name? Your air name? P. Johnson Jr.? I will. Okay? Yes. Alright. You're on. Sports guys. Mad Minute. This is Pete Johnson Jr. with your Mad Minute. The Knicks remain winless on the road this season, falling to 0-6 in an embarrassing 99-86 loss to the Clippers. Latrell Spruill and Allen Houston combined for 41 points, but it was obvious that they could not match the energy that the young Clippers brought to the court. Elton Brand and Quentin Richardson paced Los Angeles, scoring 20 points apiece. Knicks continue their road trip Tuesday night at Golden State. The first-place Nets, coming off a victory of their own against the struggling 4-7 and Knicks, start a five-game, seven-night road trip in Denver tonight. The only other NBA game scheduled is Houston at Sacramento. The New York Rangers are also a first-place New York team after a 6-2 win at the Garden over the Thrashers. Eric Lindros led the way, recording a hat-trick, including goal number 300 of his career. The Rangers move to 11-0 and scoring at least three goals. This has been Pete Johnson Jr. with your Mad Minute. <laughs> All right. Pete Johnson Jr., that was your best one so far. That's the keeper. Slower. Uh, yeah, it was slower. The only thing, why'd you get so angry at the end with the Mad Minute? Why, well, did you think it meant Mad Angry Minute? <laughs> no, I was just a little upset about the first one. He, he, All right, but now you're into this one. Yeah. And that one sounded good. Pull that one. All leave right. it for the guys tomorrow. That right. was good. All mm -hmm. right, you got one. Hey, Taint Licker, where's the giant score? <laughs> uh, it's ten to seven giants. You now answer. Well, all this part isn't going to be on there. Yeah, it's, well, not, it's not mad post game. You don't know because when they when they do the show six to ten in the yeah, morning, right. there's no updates. Yeah, you're right. Live updates. Yeah. And okay. you answer to the name Taint Liquor. Yeah, don't be called Taint Liquor. You're Pete Johnson Jr. All right, Al. Here's what I want you to do. Pull that one for him. Nothing else. Okay. Pull it for him tonight. Leave it for who's the uh, producer of that show? Uh, Olive. All right, Olive. Tell him that this is your guy. He's worked real hard for you. Give this a listen. The kid is interested in joining the, the show, and we'll do anything. He's okay. graduating from school, getting his degree, and he really loves sports. He loves sports, and he knows sports, and he works like a, like a dog, this kid. Okay. All right, don't bring up about how many times girls have knocked him out. All right, yeah. yeah. Leave that off the resume. Okay. And uh, right, then, That'll be a woad wasp for and, him. And then uh, leave him your uh, beautiful game show. All right. And yeah. then do me one more thing. Yeah, let the sports guys have grape, ape, or tape. And then do one more thing for me. Bring me the big knife. I'm going to cut my throat. Do not get that big knife. <laughs> Nobody get him a big knife. Fuzzy, look who's on the uh, phone. It's after me, boobs. Ah, from Friday night's debauchery. From Friday night's pony party. <laughs> I looked over. There was a pile of puss so high I couldn't climb to the top of it. And it was just... Rolling on each other every which way. 
Have me boobs right in the center of all of it. You could have poked in anywhere and started getting laid. Anywhere at all. Like a globe of poon. Hey, F me boobs. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, baby. How you doing, F me boobs? Oh, I'm doing good. I just wanted to say thank you so much for Friday night. Thank you sorry for coming I, in. Yeah, I'm sorry that I got a little out of hand there. That's okay. We had it coming to us. It was a blast. The ladies were gorgeous. The daisy chain was hot. That was my favorite part. That was your fave? Yes. The okay. Daisy was so hot. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, Effie. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye Effie Boobs. There's Effie Boobs. Had a great time, Fuzzy. <laughs> Everyone having a great time. Everyone had a great time. Two glasses of wine and uh, Sweet Melissa will rob a house for you. <laughs> what they used to call it when they would bum rush a house and kick the door in? Home invasion. All right, She yeah. was ready to do home invasions. <laughs> On two glasses of wine. I felt like Mickey and Mallory hanging around with her. <laughs> Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Hey, uh, Steve. Steve, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, Steve. Hey, guys. Yeah. Potholder equals MC squared. Hoo there you go. Um, you know, uh, I think that Al Dukes. I really like that show of his. I think I got an idea for his next show. He can call it Trucks, Ducks, and Sucks. <laughs> All right, Iris you. loves you. All right, thank you. Thank very much. you, Steve. That's the last uh, complaint I want to hear about that hideous show. Mm. Al, tomorrow night, just like we do with Friday Fright, where he finally got a good report. Right. That'll be you with your game show tomorrow night. Okay. Why don't you rob off of Richard Scary? Trains, planes, and things that go. <laughs> that would have been a lot funnier. Hey, Jimmy, you're on Run of Fez. Quote the guest card holder, 10570. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, how you doing, guys? Yeah. Freddie Fright did a good job, but I hate to break it to you. He was a little inaccurate in his reporting. The uh, Nets are actually coming off of a loss to the Sixers, not beating the Knicks. I so you might have to retake. All right, get uh, in here, uh, uh, Pete Johnson Jr. And that was the best one, too. Yeah. Uh, it's a killer. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, Thank you, you I, Jimmy. That is true. I was w w referring to their last game that they played against the Knicks. You could see in my report. It's <laughs> Ronnie, the first you place can Nets see in my report. Comma, coming off a victory of their own against coming the struggling off. four and seven Knicks. Again, it's I was a referring Saturday back to the Knicks. Report. I was referring back but to the Knicks. But they're not coming off a win. They're, they're coming off they're a coming loss. Off, they're, I was talking about their last game they played against the Knicks. I know they played against Philadelphia and lost the last game. I know that. Then that should be in the report. Yes. The last game should be but in the I, report. But I went from not the Knicks to the Nets. The last the game the is what they're coming off of. Right, but I was what was going from the Knicks to the Nets. You're nutty enough to be a sports guy. You're that wacky. You have to realize people that uh, enjoy sports are really sticklers for details. I know. When Billy put that call up, I said to him right outside, I said, I know their last game was lost to Philadelphia. I knew exactly what the guy was talking about. Oh, good. I get to hear about your conversations with Billy in the hall. <laughs> that has been my misinformed minute. <laughs> Are you calling a misinformed minute fight? No. no, I'm not. All right, okay. we can't turn in anything in an accurate. I'm Pete Johnson Jr., and I'm going to tell you some lies. In NASCAR, Dale Earnhardt has recently died in a car crash. Two midgets beat up Mike Tyson last night. The Giants, coming off a Super Bowl win against the Ravens, <laughs> oh, destroyed Minnesota. By the way, the Giants are real Giants. <laughs> Joe Morris had 200 yards rushing against the Redskins. That is my mad minute. <laughs> the minute will make you mad. That's the problem. You'll be mad if you hear And I am not rubbing my taint. It's another Bre lie. Breaking news. Mickey Mantle has died. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> not recently. <laughs> not recently. Freddie, right, what are we going to do? we got two minutes left. Uh, I was, he he, he I feels was... good about it. Hand it in. You're on your own. You feel good about your mad minute, yes, right? Yes, I do. You feel like that's going to get you to get I was get referring it. back to the Knicks, yes. Sure. Well, I'm sure that'll work. With the four that. and seven Knicks. That's what I was writing about. All right. That's what he was worried about. Nothing else. I All think right. you're going to get caught. Yeah, we're going to get out of here. Fuzzy, we're getting ready to end this show. It went fast tonight, huh? Yeah, it did. It went real fast. See, sometimes bad shows can go by really quick. <laughs> That's amazing. So a lot of people think, hey, if you have a good show, it just flies by. Not in our case. Bad shows will just whip by. Just so you know, Freddie Fright, right now the Vikings lead the Giants 14-13 at the half. I pay no attention. That's why you don't do reports in the game. Because it's constantly changing. I apologize. I pay no attention to the facts. Yeah, they never do updates during right. the games. That's why they no, have those three I, guys sitting in the booth. 
Yeah, Casale used to walk off the field before the <laughs> first quarter. I don't want to say what is happening, because what if later it changes? <laughs> then you'll come back and say, wait a minute, I thought Cleveland was winning 3 to nothing in the first quarter. Then later I find out the score is 33 to 10, and I look like a goofus. Four quarters later, I'm the idiot. That's why I'm Pete Johnson Jr., and if I can get a close-up of this, I'm rubbing my taint. <laughs> Let's look at that again on instant replay. So, my taint. So, wait, there might be something on my taint here. Can I please get a close-up? I was rubbing my taint earlier. I am not rubbing it now. That is my update. Good luck to you, man. Thank We're going to turn this in with our comments. No, we won't turn in our comments. We'll just give you the tape, and that'll be it. Okay. Right. That All is right, now you feel like you're a happy intern now? Yeah. You feel like you got a lot out of this internship? Yes. Hopefully. Hopefully. What's that mean? I'll tell you when it's over. Unless it works out, you won't be happy, unless you get the gig. It's a learning experience, but it's supposed to result in something. Says who? Who says it has to result in anything? Isn't that the point? No. The point is you get a shot. That means you right. get experience. Did right. you get any experience? Yes. And the internship. Okay. We gave you a shot with, yes, the, with the sports guys in market number one. Yes. We're giving them a, a produced tape. You are and the most accident. ungrateful person I have ever met in my Don't life, let, and I'm being completely serious. Don't let them sit in the lobby and think about what a terrible person you are. You're you, horrible. You follow them, you sit next to them, and the two of you just stare at each other and say we're losers. <laughs> Until one of you decides you're going to kiss. Now we're late. We actually missed the out cue. You sons of bitches. <laughs> we're actually a minute late now. Asses, let's just stay on the air. Ah, oh, we missed our out time. Rich, Julio, see you. Ah, I'm furious. Well, we'll see. If I get something good, see you. Aren't I entitled to a job and a career? Ah, oh, we're on a fez. We got one more to go. Oh, and Spider Monkey, too. Spider Monkey's my only favorite member of the staff. Everyone else, Fez hates. 877-692-1027. You don't need that. We're leaving. All right, we're back tomorrow, right after Opie and Anthony at 7 o'clock. See ya. See ya.